Uh, welcome to the planning board meeting on Tuesday, December 10th. Um, we have a fairly large uh, agenda today, starting at 6.30 now. Um, the planning board will be meeting till about 7.30, where we will adjourn and we will um, then start the master plan steering committee meeting for a hour till 8.30. And thereafter, we'll be starting at 8.30 to talk about our budget and the town manager should be joining us as well for that um, and adjourning about 10. In there also, um, for the first hour, I'll talk specifically about that agenda. We are going to talk about the ZBA petition number 3897 for 36 Chester Street. Yep. Um, we also, uh, as a board, will be talking about the peer design, um, a peer review design consultants, which will also then go into obviously our budget discussion later on in the evening, be part of that discussion as well. Um, and then, um, but to be kick it off, um, since there's no one in the room, I don't need to make the announcement, but we are on WinCam and everyone is being recorded. Um, we will start with um, open updates. Um, I guess we I will start. We can start. start with we can start with the LHD and just at least um, yep. let Wanna everyone make an on yeah, that? let everybody know that there is um, a local historic district uh, study commission information session committee committee, committee. Uh, information <laughs> session this Thursday mm -hmm. at seven p.m. at the town hall auditorium. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, f we sent out, and Savannah and Nicole actually went went out and uh, visited a, a lot of members within the uh, proposed district, which centers around the center business district and goes a little bit further out into Lincoln and McCall and some of the surrounding neighborhood. Um, so we're trying to uh, gather information about um, the willingness for the property owners and business owners and whether or not they would um, think that this is a uh, a uh, that this would be a good idea for them to uh, be part of the district um, this is one of several steps that we would be taking in order to eventually have a local historic district um, encompassing that area the, mm -hmm. the draft boundary is still I said the, the boundary is still in draft at this point. The bylaw has not been written. The idea is that we're just trying to gauge support mm -hmm. so that the select board can make a decision on whether or not to move forward um, or potentially change course based upon this first information session. Um, this is kind of a, a slow process that um, it's not like we're running towards spring here. Um, it's a potential that it's most likely fall. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the idea is that we really have to get not just the, the property owners and the business owners, but there's also some school, um, there are also some school buildings that are within this district. So working with That's superintendent, school committee, EFPBC is definitely gonna be part of the answer um, for that bylaw. Um, and just as a, uh, in terms of what the, the bylaw or the, the district was trying to do uh, in general, it's, it's really two things. One is to um, prevent demolition of historically significant structures mm -hmm. uh, and contri sorry, contributing, uh, contributing structures within the district and also to allow uh, room for additions or new development within the district. So those are the two main parts. To um, allow room that, or to, to allow review, changes. To allow change is the legal word and it's to be that it's compatible with the um, town center. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> so um, that's for the local historic and district. That one can either you or I don't know if you're working together now. But, we are. Um, yeah. Send an um, e email to the entire historical commission because they were asking about it and uh, then location and everything again. It hadn't been on the web, so they were right. So um, specifically the commission. So I know that there are three members that have already said that they're going to be coming on Thursday. So that's good, um, but. Um, I'll try to get as many people from the not just the local historic district study committee, but also from um, the historical commission as Great. well. Thank you. Yep. Um, I think I'll stop there for the moment. Is uh, anyone like, else from here going? I was going to go. I was go, planning but I can't. to go. Yeah, I'm unable to attend. It's Thursday, right? Yeah. It's, like, it's a rare to Thursday. I'm able to go. So. Yeah. I'll be, I, I'll be mm. there. Okay. Great. I had it um, on there, but Violet has a violin concert now, and I 
Oh, can no, you, um, for our I meeting then on the 17th <laughs> and the beginning of our agenda, just have give a like five minutes so, so I'm you at, and Maureen can give us an update? So I'm actually going to do, um, write a memo of some oh, okay. kind. About our, what? I'm sorry. I'm to, um, to recap what happened at the That'd meeting be because, well... Um, Wait, we're, I'm sorry. Back up. I didn't hear something. It sure. Was, yeah. Yes. Um, well, Heather was asking for a recap. Of? of the Thursday night information yeah, sessions for the LHD. Oh, oh, yeah. And I said, uh, more than just like a five minute recap, a recap, I'm actually going to write some type of a memo or a report right. um, because there are a number of people that can't go to the meeting that want to kind of find out what the sentiment is. So that it's really going to be directed towards select board, school administration, planning board, like kind of everyone mm -hmm. saying that this this is what happened at the meeting. Uh, so it'll be a little more formal than well, just a little recorded? update. It's, it's supposed to be recorded, yes. Okay. Also, there's, I did skim um, the 65-page uh, booklet from Mass Historical Commission. Establishing. Creating yeah. A, yeah, establishing local historic district. Everybody on this board should be uh, yeah. conversant with it. Right. And I do see that the planning board has a legal role. I was not aware of that until I read that. Um, but we actually have a vote at one point. Um, I believe recall. it's a recommendation vote. Okay, but yeah. even so, mm -hmm. but we have a legal role as part of the process set forth by state law. So, um, and then I think they, I'm not aware of there being a chairman. There's supposed to be a chair and a clerk. I, uh, for the study committee, I don't think it's necessary. I th it says so in the booklet. Not for the study committee. Mm -hmm. For the study. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm not. Then that's. So a, I think you should yeah. be reviewing it again, frankly, because I think we've got to get a flow chart and really understand it. And our historical commission, although they aren't um, legally empowered in any way, they certainly are the obvious um, commission in town because of their role as advocates for historic preservation. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I think a flow chart would be helpful. Too. Yeah. Could, could I ask, Brian, that you send a link to that document around? Sure. Yeah, that would be helpful. My ability to maneuver through that site is limited. It's called Establishing Local Historic Districts, and it's out of the Massachusetts Historical Commission. It's easy to find, but yeah. yeah. I'm just, yep. yeah. Yeah. for many people, it may be easy to find. At <laughs> <laughs> this moment, it's, I can't do much, it's ancient I can do Greek that. to me. Anyway. Um, if Brian's making a note, I was wondering if you got any response from um, about the memo uh, note you wrote to uh, to the AG's office about the, um, the whatever abandoned house on Johnson Road. Um, oh, I had another question though. I wanted to ask okay. how it went when you were telling people about. Really great. We went, made sure to go to Wedge Pond as well, Good. so they're all there. Um, it was really awesome to get to speak to the business owners and be able to introduce myself. And okay. people were super friendly, which was a really wonderful experience. So, welcome, welcome, welcome to wonderful yeah, Winchester. Use your, right? use your mic. But okay. keep in mind, because there was an attempt. To, of course, it was years and years ago. It becomes irrelevant in some ways. But the, the um, business owners were supportive, and it was the property business owners, it was the property owners who were less enthusiastic. So that's where we're going to really have to focus. Pardon me? The landlord? No, the property owners. But the property yeah, owners the versus, yeah, versus, versus, the property versus owners. you know, any business owners or, right. you know, so, um, It's nice to get their support. But were you talking about the business improvement district or the LHD? No, LHD. That was um, probably easily 25 years ago, so a long time. Yeah. Again, it, and well, for history, it's pretty irrelevant, except for the experience, which was the property owners are going to be extremely important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, back to the Johnson Road. Um, um, so I have about 78 emails that I need. Really? That I, no, not oh, about oh. that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that I, that, uh, that one. Right, so um, today was... Yeah, yeah, not able, but but I, I would imagine there's probably a response of some kind in there that I will have more Even of an update. Even but, yeah. uh, but maybe not. Um, we had the MBTA <laughs> yeah, yeah. hearing, which was um, Maureen attended as well, mm -hmm. um, at which I spoke on behalf of the planning board. Um, a lot of residents were very happy that the planning board came forward and spoke as oh, the unit. The select board chose not to, um, and I don't think any other boards or commissions came in and spoke at it. So. Right. We were very, um, residents were very happy that we took a position. Um, and uh, those, there are notes taken on that that uh, the town manager, Lisa Wong, took that are online, I believe, of what all the comments were and all the feedback. Um, the My personal uh, take of a lot of the comments were they wish we had more control over it, but we actually have almost no control over it. Um, except through our delegates. 
and they don't have much push. No. They have some, but they don't have as much as a I lot of residents. I think that's not play. quite right because we have um, we have uh, land. They're going to need per, uh, approval we from do, the town. Yes. Yeah, no, yeah, I mean, we have leverage. We have <laughs> leverage. Really they need some easements understand. from the town exactly. for town meeting, and for town meeting to re it's release huge. those easements, they need to. The town meeting has to be comfortable with the project. And exactly. Heather's we been would, on this really project too long. I think there's a sort of burnout on the part of so many people who've been involved. But I will say there are two people who, one of whom is a town meeting member, I guess I can say it because their memo has been circulating. Um, Sally and Dennis Dale. Dennis oh, yeah. is a landscape yeah. architect. Sally works with him mm -hmm. um, in support. And they've really been doing some. Um, they're great. They're, they're great they're folks. They've they're been. Really are. Thank you, Betsy. They've been, uh, pr they prepared a memo and it was quite specific because some of the requests have to do with um, the veneer on the station and it is a veneer of uh, granite that's used elsewhere in the town and we'd really like to see it retained. And the T has been proposed, uh, or has proposed using concrete and we've said, no, we really no. don't, we want the veneer. Um, so then the T is saying, well, we don't think it's available anymore, you know, that quarry, we can't get it. And then Dennis, who's a landscape architect, said, well, that's not really true. I know places where you can get it. <laughs> Excuse me, right, exactly. So um, it's the specific responses that make a big difference because when the uh, group sits around this table, the working group, we often, I think, have a, there's a consensus about what the goals are, but then there, it just kind of fall, goes off into nowhere. Yeah, but when yeah. the um, Dales put a lot of time in with links on their memo, because it was digitized um, mm -hmm. uh, to specific examples, uh, I think it really did help. And yeah, that was in the meeting the that key. was post. Yeah. Correct, it was yeah. after the meeting. But I, I circulated it, I believe, to this entire mm -hmm. board, and it went to a lot of people, including our mm -hmm. um, two state senators and state reps, so a lot, and the town manager, of course. So um, I think there, uh, I, I understand there will be a discussion. It, it's on the agenda. I just looked because I'm liaison to the um, design review committee. Mm -hmm. They'll be discussing it tomorrow night, too. Oh, good. And several of their members have been in the working group for a while. So mm -hmm. yeah. um, I actually think there's some um, opportunity to make some headway on this. Well, I, so yeah, I maybe I should keep it more you, positive. You know. Well, I think there's we can make headway. There is discussion about let's get a ramp behind Thompson Street. There's ADA issues back there. There's not enough width to get those right. ramps back there. So there's certain things where residents are like, get it off of, you Shore know, road. get Shore Road and get it onto Thompson Street. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, we still have to abide by ADA compliance. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing we could do or any one of us could do to change that. And we want them to be, we want the station to be ADA supported. Oh, a hundred percent, if not more than the state standards. So it just, it kind of, really the topics that we discussed and we hit on as a planning board is the ones that I think that the residents are coming in, like the wall, and let's right. make sure that the great wall stays great. Um, <laughs> it's better than um, the alternative, as they say, right? You know, and so, yeah, I, I just, there are certain things where let's go back to the drawing board, let's, and at this point, the MBTA has the flexibility where they could shut the station down Absolutely. on us, and if they do, I that, don't, right again, that's, I think, a bit, uh, yeah. Uh, so it's on this, the I guess edge. I'm often yeah. marveling, left marveling over government and how people take positions mm -hmm. uh, and threats. Basically, it's negotiating, and so yep. they'll say, "I'll do this if you don't do that." And it's, right, um, right. and so it's really not about any longer the law, and it's not even maybe so much. Well, it is, I suppose, politics, but it's not about law. It's just about who wants what and what your leverage is. And leverage is why we're, we're talking what we're talking about right now. And I do think that the uh, given the Baker administration's commitment to smart growth, given our zoning, given the support, we should be able to get through um, economic development at the state level that uh, we've got housing coming online. It's not even just a fiction um, that we, I think, have a good argument to make that we're, uh, we, we, the station's not going to close. Um, we want to serve the community through transportation. It's on the, I, I think I'm sometimes uh, the only person reading the big print paper of uh, Boston Globe every day, mm -hmm. but transportation's a yes, front, it's very huge. It's front page. Yeah, I know it's, on, it's, I know it's there yeah. almost every day. So <laughs> I, I, I'm not too concerned about that. Yes, it's been said, but I mean, I, you know, so many of these builder developers come in and talk about their 40 Ds, which they're never going to do. So it's a question of how we respond. When we hear about these threats, and I, I just wouldn't take that too, too, 
<laughs> to heart. Yeah. So I think we've got some opportunity still, and uh, but I do think the train's moving really quickly, and that's why I have, as you, all you, of you know, been saying, where is the group? Because the uh, sooner Winchester gets a united uh, front on what we want, the yeah. easier. The letter went out. The large, um, the large, the large. The large letter did go out from the group. From the for, since the, the working group, yes. Uh, we've not seen it. Uh, that's Bet, because it came when Brian was. So Beth Bet sent Beth sent a sixty percent letter. Um, okay. Beth Rudolph, sorry, the, to, to, to the MTA. To them, to. She should be copying all of us. Could you send that back? Yeah, to, I haven't. I no, haven't, it shouldn't have to be through you. She can send it to the planning well, board. Yeah, just just because because we need to be in the loop. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. It's well, just, it's, I mean, it, it should have it's been. All, it goes to everyone who's in the working group. Yeah, it should. It should go to the whole planning board. I'm sorry. It's, yeah. And I have been in the working group, so I didn't get it. Mm -hmm. I've attended a lot of meetings over the years. Well, it was, so it's those who got. attended the last meeting that created the memo. So. Okay, but even so, it, we can be copied. Okay. No, no problem. The um, Abby Road will be coming before us next uh, next week discuss their guardrails. Um, I'm hoping Beth can add more information on that. Um, um, yeah, so I mean, it's a right now, it's a wood, it's a wooden with a steel backed and he wants mm -hmm. to change it to an all steel, which is, uh, although it's not uh, aesthetically as pleasing, it's it is higher safety. Um, it was his choice. We basically said both of us um, you know, our personal opinions, mm. um, we were not speaking for the board at all. It was basically like we'd prefer what we approved. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Right. I, well, I would prefer what you I approved. You would prefer what you, what you approved, and I would me. also <laughs> prefer what we approved. Um, and he says, well, I'll, I'll, I'm going to try anyway. Well, can we we're going to talk about this next minutes. week, right? Yep. Yeah. We don't have to. It's just that. an update. No, it's just an update. And um, Beth will be here to provide support for the planning board if you have questions. Um, engineering is also not coming this evening. The only thing that they had was this ZBA petition. Um, and I have those notes, which I don't think anyone has. So I'm, I have. I, um, so, But there was no other reason for them to come for the rest of the time, just in case. So. The other thing is the master plan, which we'll talk about when we begin the master right. plan section, an update. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. I think um, let's move on word to our next agenda item, which is Chester. CBA petition mm -hmm. number 3897. Nine, seven. Um, so I did not develop a memo for this, but I'm going to give a little history of this uh, property and some a, a couple of recommendations. But um, up to just full disclosure, I did not have time to do a full full review of, of, of this petition. Um, Before you begin, I'm just going to say, just so, for anyone who's listening or just so everyone knows, um, it's seeking a special permit under Section 3.5.7 of our Winchester Zoning Bylaw with in accordance with Chapter 40A, Section 9 of the Massachusetts General Laws. They're so as to be permitted to demolish a pre-existing, non-conforming, single-family dwelling even though the house has already been demolished, located on a lot which does not meet the lot frontage and lot width requirements, and to construct a new single family dwelling that will meet all setback requirements. Thank you, DM. Thank you very much. And thank you, Heather. Um, so this was the result of a demolition application from August of 2018. Mm -hmm. um, the letter from the Historical Commission says that this is an eligible building um, they, um, and not only, um, sorry, in a four to three vote, the commission determined that, that this eligible building was historically significant. However, in a five to two vote, the commission further determined that the eligible building would not be subject to a delay. So, it, um, at this time in September of 2018, it was, um, I was allowed to get demolished at, at any time. Why would they do that? Um, I don't have the information. So based upon the letter, it doesn't say exactly why they, f because they were not um, looking at new, um, they were not looking at these new drawings, obviously back in 18, uh -huh. they, they weren't. So, they, so typically the way it happens is that something would get lifted based upon um, the replacement structure. Um, I have no idea what happened here. My guess is that it was based upon the uh, whatever was left 
um, in terms of the historic nature of the house that it had it's since been altered or changed beyond what was You're guessing. I'm totally guessing. So I'm we, totally, let's not yeah. guess. So it was, know, a five, it was a five it was a five to, to two, two vote. It wasn't the unanimous right. vote. So it was a five to two vote to let it be demolished. I have to say I want to follow up on that. That's where again, yeah. Um, the next time you're attending their meeting, I think they need um, as a group. As, I guess I just don't think it's natural or obviously for a lot of people. But this is the time for negotiation. That's what I'm saying about the law, and that's where it's. Not, I mean, yeah, they can let go or not, but this is. It's not something that's natural for a lot of people. But this is an opportunity to negotiate and. Well, well back at the time, I mean. One of the meetings that I have attended recently, and unfortunately I was able to make last night's, they have been negotiating, so perhaps this is from a previous day. Well, I've attended meetings too, so let me just um, throw that out as a concept that I think uh, boards are. You're alive. saying at the so, demo delay hearing, not at the special permit hearing, correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah. This was a weird case where there was a demo hearing when there was no. <laughs> there was no um, Proposal, proposal which, which I, I would say is odd and is not yeah. it's not the norm for them. There um, are, there's two criteria. There's the criteria of what defines it as historical, and then there's a second one for the delay. So you have to meet both criteria. So um, they defined it as historically significant, but f they voted that it was, right. it, was it was a four three five two. That, right? So two people. That, that's what I was just curious. It did not meet split. the qualifications to be yeah. delayed. So. Um, so it's the two parts, and the second part is something about the second part. That's what I was asking for. about. Yeah, well, and I don't have it in front of me. I can pull it up. Say qualifications, but in the end, it's really judgment. But also, it's about personalities process. and process sense also. Of, yeah, right. Just a sense of negotiation, and exactly. some people just don't negotiate. And yeah, I, I think, think it's unwise to second guess what it is they did or didn't do. Well, I oh, guess well, I'll say it's even. something that boards generally are weak on. Uh, that's my view, and I will state it. And I think that having staff helps people learn a process. I've learned because, should I say this on camera? I'm married to an expert, so. <laughs> and guess what? Our two kids are experts, too. I, I live with negotiators, so. But that's, government can do that, and all you have to do is read the paper, and you see how negotiation yeah. takes place all the time at higher levels of government. But this town, I think, can do better. Agreed. Um, this was the vote from the Historical Commission meeting last night uh, specific, uh, about this petition. Um, so it's, it was a unanimous decision for favorable, favorable action um, that the finishes should harmonize with the surrounding historic neighborhood and should be limited to yeah. wood or shingle and trim, wood clavering or shingle and trim. And the garage should be set back as far as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe limited to approximately a third of the width Good. of the facade. Good. This may require some redesign in order to reduce the yeah. width of the garage. So um, based upon my very short v uh, review of this and the commission's um, recommendations, um, my, recommend, um, my recommendation would be to support the historical commission's mm -hmm. recommendations. Yeah. Um, the other thing to note is that the only thing that's non-conforming about a lot because there's no house there now right. um, is it is a 60 foot wide frontage in, oh. instead of 65 right. so it's a sub but um, but the new building is is still adhering to all the setbacks so generally um, yeah well I'll, I'll just stop there that that is the, that is the nonconformity it's a it's a it's a five foot width um, deficiency in the frontage um, but all of the setbacks are adhered to in the new um, in the new uh, design. I actually couldn't. Oh, were you still going? I'm done. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find the side setback because I was curious if they could if they could rotate the garage. So you couldn't find it because this was on my desk. Um, yeah, there's, I had one. You did get. So did everyone get a new plot plan that shows the new? Because the original was, application, plot the, plan. yeah, the original application actually did not have a proposed oh, actually maybe it's a hiding. proposed plot it's plan. Full, mine was folded way at the back. Oh yeah. Um, oh, okay. I have them here that shows the side setbacks at 10-4, the, 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 the 10 four and 10-5. Um, so is that enough to turn? They could turn it, but... I feel like ours is like that. They could yeah. turn it a bit, but then the building, the facade would not be parallel to the street. Hmm. I think when I look at the way they've designed it, 
it looks like they've made the facade parallel to the street so that if they turned it, it wouldn't work. It's slightly No, off. no, I mean turn yeah. the whole, like, turn House. the entrance to the garage. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you're talking about to get in from the side? To the side, because you know how we don't like to see the garage doors. I thought I, if they turn it sideways, I think they can access it, like we did on that two-family. Yeah, I think what would happen is that the way that you could do that is that you would have to make the driveway a little wider in order to swing in, and then they would probably lose a little bit of square footage, but I, but yes, I think it's possible. But that was my suggestion. I mean, they're right. Um, they, they designed it to be right under site plan review. It's at 3598. Uh. That's the, the square footage, but they were already in for um, special permit. But the idea is that they're right up against that 3,600 square foot um, trigger for site plan review. Um, however, I mean, I think the second um, vote that the Historical Commission made kind of says, you know what, there's probably some room for some improvement here related to that width of the garage. So I, I thought, you know, I think it looks like we're all saying roughly there, the same no, thing. No, Heather Hannon's right. I see, I mean, I appreciate the comment from the Historical Commission, but that just isn't gonna happen because of the, what they've got with the two bay garage, um, unless, have, unless it's uh, the Historical Commission's request isn't going to happen. It's just, that's the width. There's no room to shrink it any further, I don't think. Um, it's, so. I mean, I'm supportive of this um, quickie uh, recommendation from the Historical Commission. I, I think you're right if it, if it could be moved around, but then they're into a redesign, and I'm totally on board with it. But well, know how that'll go with they well they're, they're saying to move it as far back as possible. You're saying to not just move it back, but actually put the garage yeah, on the, the rotate back the back garage. On. Windows. It right. doesn't matter if it's flush. But in order to move the entrance to the garages onto the left side of the property, they would undoubtedly have to shrink Swing. that building. Just saying, they have a, they're have they just barely meeting the 10-foot setback right now. Mm. So you'd probably need, um, you need a turnaround in there. I'm guessing you'd need more than 10 feet on yeah, the side no of the doubt. house. I don't know how much. No, ours is pretty tight. I know what it is. I'm not sure what it is. That's why I was So it I is set back. Pardon? It is set back in the plan. It's set from the porch. No, I'm talking about if you and want to. And for the facade by about five feet. We're talking about the side entrance. If you want to put a side entrance in, you're going to need more space between the building mm -hmm. and the left property line. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the point. That's and the I don't know how yeah, much. Yeah, you'd be you, shrinking their, the footprint. You'd have to shrink the footprint. Yeah. Which I'm just saying that's. I don't have a problem do, We've doing We've asked that. other people to rotate their garages. We have. We the have. question is have yeah. we done that on, a, on a lot this narrow? Lose some square footage. Well, we can just, I mean, we're not going to figure it out right now. Um, I think that's a good idea uh, without knowing how far this yeah. real, it, yeah. it's, uh, it's back to the drawing board with the architect to do it. I, I, I agree with you, Heather, on this. It's just they would have to change their plans. That's all. Exactly. Because it is a really narrow lot. I, I have, if, I just have a really minor question, and I note that it's, it's the, proposal here is for wood clapboard or hardy board for the exterior yeah. and is I mean to be honest as a homeowner I would be happy with hardy plank because you don't have to there's much lower maintenance on it so other than um, the fact that it's not wood is there some reason the board doesn't like that I mean, you can, the hardy plank, I grant it doesn't look exactly like wood. It doesn't. But on the other hand, I have to paint my house every eight to nine years because it's made out of wood. And you can touch up on the parts we don't. Um, we haven't well, done maybe that you have better yeah, paint. Well, I, my guess is that it seemed like the materials that they're using for this house are, are quite, quite high end. They're using some copper flashing, and, mm -hmm. and why not just kind of, yeah. why not just they're do it? For, like, for why not make it? Make it sing, I guess. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'd rather support the wood. I mean, they're getting a break. Oh, I don't there have are a lots problem. of wood just right. And, houses. And, and, right, and honestly, as, 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 as most of us who have Actually, wood houses know, yeah, I most mean, of the they, houses in town, still in town are. And you know what? The maintenance is not that difficult. Thank you, Betsy. You're right. I mean, every once in a while, we have our house stained. And uh, yeah, and that's about all it's, it takes. It's not difficult. But it does add to the cost of owning the house. Well, they're, they're well down slightly, but not very, not very darn piece. much. Not very darn much. You're, you're not talking about tens of thousands of dollars, you're really right. not. Hey, 
Go for it. That's I'm, it. Yeah, that's, 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 I'm just saying, because we, had, we, had, we, had, we had to do our house this last summer. You know, like, you I think it was six grand altogether. So it's not that bad. Wooden clapboards, the hardy plank boards, the long term maintenance costs are much lower for the hardy plank because you don't have to paint them. Most people in Winchester still have clapboarded houses. I'm not talking about what point. most people have. If we're talking about economics, there's a there's a, a there's a logical choice here. If you're talking about aesthetics, then maybe there's a different choice. Well, the thing is, the, the thing is, yeah, and I think, I mean, my position really is often it's like the appearance of the home. You know, if it is substantially different, you know, um, you know, I mean, that can definitely impact on the valuation. That's right. Okay. I, just I, saying. We have, I see sure. Here, hold on. I, I have friends who own a hardy plank clad house, and they're very happy because they don't have to paint it. Okay. <laughs> and it I looks know. fine. Well, like I said, you know, we've been in our house for, oh, I don't know, I think how long we've been there. We've been there for a long, 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 long time. And, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, yeah. It's and it's been demoed to me from yeah. that. So, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, oh, I went this a is, little, this is that little too this far. Is, okay, that's okay. So, right. So it's sorry. It's that gray. It's this one. Yeah. Okay. The other thing is, I couldn't tell. Are they removing that tree? From my reading of their landscape, the landscape plans, that uh, tree is gone. Is, that that is a, I don't know how to tell you this. That is a street tree. Is that still? I mean, the house it's is gone. Them. Is the tree still there? I was. In no shape to go and yeah, look at it. So we got because they can't, they can't, they can't, they can't just take it. They, they can't just <laughs> take down. They, they, just, they can't just take down a street tree. This so. is all theoretical. Well, um, just saying. Do you want to talk about concerns? And we can go yeah. around and start developing a motion or. Just somebody make a motion. Um, I. I don't know how they're going to get it from the side without that. It's, it's going to create a, a deeper redesign. garage depth which is going to take up the whole front facade as right now it's going backwards, right? So it's not a square, it's a rectangle. So when you twist it, it's coming across the whole facade of the building. So my thought is actually to leave it as is because I'd rather have the active space of the front door and the porch instead of losing that to the garage and a falsified fake window approach. Have it set back. I'm not concerned about the hardy plank for this neighborhood. So we're as long as we don't do vinyl like the yeah. like the historical mission also recommended. Um, the the tree is planned for removal. Oh. So that's that's a real red flag. If you look at just, the, just speaking as the chairman of the street yeah, tree. Look at the <laughs> if you look at the proposed landscape design, it, it's off of that. It's no longer at that uh, in the in the walkway. So, yeah, yep. and it's, that's, it's that's, definitely gone. That's a real big concern of mine because that's, that's the only the mature. They, they talk a lot about trees on the property, but they're actually the trees that are noted on the actual existing plot plan do not do not appear on their landscape. It, it, it appears that the the center of the tree is on private property, right on the yeah. line. So if it just goes by the center point, or does it go by the? It's not the canopy. It's not well. No, the the trunk. Yeah, no. The, the trunk, the trunk looks like it's on the center between the sidewalk and the property line. I think if there's a there's a legal debate, I guess okay. there there could be there. I bet you. Are, but, no, but yeah. To the ZBA that the tree that they're talking about removing is well, partially in town property. Well, they're also removing mature trees in the backyard, from okay. what I can tell. Well, no, but we don't. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but the I only problem depends how that. many, I guess. Hey, hey, having dealt with flooding yeah, issues in this country the last 20, 30 plus years, you know, I'm. Um, does the garage look extra deep? I can't tell, but the I, do, I don't have a scale. Yeah. The the yeah. like there's deep. plenty. Oh, let me. Back, yeah, because they're saying set it back yeah, more. There's. Um, they've got. Dimension. Well, but I think the idea would be just you know, take it out of this uh, mud room. Or, um, I mean, there's just all sorts of ways. The garage is actually not extra deep. Um, there is. If you look on page A2 of their floor yeah, plan. Yeah, I'm looking at A2 as well. Unfortunately, right. there's not a lot of, it looks like it's about maybe 25 feet deep. Yeah. Well, 
Anyway, I think I don't know if that's their powder normal room, room, their mud room, and whatever. There's a closet in that garage. There's all sorts of stuff that, that just move it out of the mud room if you have to. But I, I think even because I, I do pay, watch these setbacks, and even if you get like six inches, uh, twelve is better, but or eight even, whatever, six, twelve. But just some setback of the garage mass. They have two feet. Yeah. They, they have two feet already. Oh, They've got two feet from, from the front, front facade, and why, why am I not seeing that on this? Here, it's a single plane. I think that's the overhead. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe that's the overhead. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, two well, feet seems minimal to me. It's, um, seems minimal or amenable. You get the it's shadow. Minimal. Two <laughs> feet is minimal, minimal for minimal. a setback. Right. Okay. That's that almost is, non-existent. Yeah. Right. Two feet? No, that's quite a bit for a setback of a garage against the main facade. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's quite a bit. I mean, I see, I, I'm yeah. very attentive to I, it. It's, I, uh, it may be what's common, but I would prefer to see it larger. So. Well, anyway. I'm fine with it as is. Yeah, I am I'm just too. concerned about the tree. I right. think the fetish. So right now, I, I was trying to put some concerns. Right now, the first concern is the tree on the front edge of the property may be a street tree and should be investigated. Mm -hmm. And I want to support, and I'm hearing Betsy and Heather Hannon at least, that I want to support the um, finishes limited to wood. Um, these, it's fine. I think we want a high standard, not the... Yeah, whatever the low standard is. Of well, the low street. standard Pretty would be. is high standard. What? Yeah, Pretty low standard is, is, is vinyl standard. siding. There's a higher standard, and they all go again. Repeated, uh, but most houses in Winchester are still wood. Mm -hmm. So, okay, um, we'd say then supporting then the historical, historical commission's mm -hmm. um, recommend two recommendations. Yeah. 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 Yes, please. So as of right now, the two things that we're talking about is the tree in the front should be investigated and mm -hmm. that the, we support the Winchester Historical Commission's two recommendations. So, um, so what about the, do they also recommend, I don't know there, I don't know if this, the trim they're saying it should not be PVC. Do I read that correctly? Correct. Okay. Do I? So, well, well I, I, I do have further concerns about the trees in the back that we're moving. That's just a concern to me. So, okay, well, that could well, be a third. To my, to, my, to my eye, it looks like they're removing two trees in the back. Let me make sure I get that count right. Yeah. And the, uh, so, as, you're, as you're, planned. here's the concerns that they should be saved or that they're, that additional plantings should be. Well, I cannot tell exactly how. It, it's very difficult for me to uh, see where it lies on the exist on the new plan. Yeah. So there is a tree. One tree probably would have to go. The other tree, I don't know if it has to. But they're not replacing any. They're not putting additional trees in the back. From the landscaping plan, they're putting very short perennials up front in front of the house, and they're not actually replacing any of the trees. They you could say consider uh, replacement of large shade trees. Yes. Yeah. Please. I mean, I don't know what species tree that is. That's you can uh, you Just can replacement. That. You can say replacement of the of the uh, of the the shade trees that are taken yes. down that are being taken yeah. down. Can you put a, I would say put a condition. I would put a condition. Yeah, yeah. not yeah. just a suggestion. Right. Yes. Thank you. Heather. Or replace. Um, I, I realize that um, in some of ours is that the conditions. We're not noting we would like this to be a condition to the permit. Right. Or, right. Mm -hmm. We're just saying we we'll make recommendations, which gives them more ability to more. Right. No, but, that is, so but, that, but, but that is so important. To replace any mature shade trees on um, in the rear of the property. Yeah, replace them in kind. All right. Okay, so this is what I have. Because believe me, we have had flood events. Because they were behind schedule. I know, but we, but we have had many flood events in the past, not in the real recent past, but, yeah. you know, and it's very damaging, and anything you can do in the street trees play a huge role in minimizing that. Yep. We're not going to talk so about we, so the motion. That's so it. yeah, the motion is, so I have one concern and then two um, two conditions. This is, this is Thank you. right now, it's the tree on the front edge of the property may be a street tree and should be investigated. That's a concern. And then the other two um, conditions are, we support the WHC's two conditions up there. Those are conditions. 
And then the other third condition would be to replace any mature shade trees in the rear of the property. That have been removed. That have been removed. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what's currently working. If we want to add anything else, now's the time. Well, I think, we, I think that pretty much covers it. So someone has to. So moved. Do we want Second. to discuss the motion? We all good? All right. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Abstaining? No one. Um, okay, so that was a Jarius first. Actually, nobody seconded that motion. Craig, yeah, oh, sorry, did. sorry. That's easy. Craig, your second, five up. The, the tree lady. Okay, um, moving on. Yep. Um, so I have a document here, design consultant. So these are um, based upon the four or five emails that have been sent around. Um, mm -hmm. This is... Hang this on, is, hang on. I want to back up. You're going straight to the end yes, of sorry. the game. I want to back up and say, because I, I was the one who asked for this, and Heather, thank you for following up in mine. Mm -hmm. But I noticed that um, I had not been aware of this, but that the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals has an uh, outside mm -hmm. consultant. This kind of just came through in a kind of email chain that we got uh, when Brian brought us in and copied us on mm -hmm. something. The um, consultant is um, from Somerville, and I guess uh, Mass it, Housing, I believe, recommended him. That's fine. So he's kind of coordinating, <coughs> orchestrating, given exactly. our Excuse very me. Uh, tight uh, Excuse sort of me. situation. What is he a consultant for? 40 he's B. for the 40B River yes, Street what, what is his, his expertise? His expertise, from what I can see, because I looked him up, um, seems to be mainly affordable housing. So he's the design so, consultant. No, 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 no. no three. Fi more he is finance. A general all-purpose yeah. yeah. coordinator advisor for them as they're working through their review, their general review, oh, and ultimately, ultimately their vote at the ZBA for the River Street project. So who's the so guy his from name the state? Ezra, what's his last name? Ezra comes from the state. Mass Housing, correct. No, he's in, but he's a, oh. but he's a contractor. He's an independent contractor. From Mass Housing. For I believe he's Mass, from Mass Housing. He's from, from Mass, Mass Housing. housing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, Ezra, you don't remember his name? Um, Haber? Because it's important, I think, for people to understand. So mm -hmm. he comes in. His whole uh, what orientation is to uh, work with communities to build affordable housing. Mm -hmm. I think it's okay, but when he was uh, given this. Glenn, yeah, Ezra Haber Glenn. Glenn. Yeah, Ezra Glenn. So when he was given this assignment, uh, he then, because he's coordinating these four uh, peer reviewers, he then, uh, I guess, with Brian's, uh, received Brian's uh, recommendation from us, or it's a rec received the recommendation from us through Brian, for peer review, outside peer review on design, Ezra Glenn tried to reach Dennis. Well, this was right at the end of October, and I only followed this through the email chain. It wasn't something I was personally told, but I could see he was interested in getting um, on board, Dennis, well, Dennis was in the middle of his campaign and it was the first week in his November, so he was apparently, I'm deducing, but it was cl clear he was out to... Uh, we told we told him that out. Dennis was not going to be able to respond until okay. November 5th, so, so so we all knew that. But, right, but know. it didn't get sort of stuck in Mr. Glenn's head, apparently, and so then he decided he couldn't reach Dennis and then just promptly moved along and went and contacted an architecture firm in Somerville. And this is all in the email chain that we all got. So I'm finally paying attention to this thing and I Google the firm um, and I look at their work and I think, yikes. Um, I don't think it reaches the standard, frankly, I'll be blunt, I don't think it even reaches the standard of what's already on the table for uh, what's on River Street. And mm. this, this firm does some pretty, in my view, from some pretty, uh, uh, I'll just say, un unattractive mm -hmm. housing projects. So this is not, we're trying to elevate uh, this and we already understood there were some concerns about the design of the River Street mm -hmm. project as opposed to uh, what's been submitted versus what we saw earlier on. So with that in mind, this brings up, I think, to big picture concept. When we make a recommendation to the zoning board for any special permit project and we want to review, that's per peer review on design, that we need to exp uh, express explicitly to the zoning board, and then in this case it would be through Mr. Glenn, but we need to say that we are recommending so-and-so, and if so-and-so is not available, please contact the town planner and we will make an ad other recommendations. And that needs to be a boilerplate letter. Oh, With yeah. that in mind, now, we're trying to figure out if uh, if it's not going to be Dennis Carlone, that's fine. There he's are under, No, yeah. So but he's under contract. Now he's under contract to, to, uh, to 
um, to Ezra's defense, he wasn't the only one trying to reach out to Dennis. We, right. I was also. Us have been in campaigns. Yeah, the no, no, no. After the no, level we're talking about after the after, right, since you. November fifth. I give him okay. a big break. <laughs> no, and then he was things happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that you know, surprisingly enough, he got very sick after the oh, campaign. Yeah. Oh. yeah, so then he was like <laughs> so oh out of commission for twelve days. So well, there were a number do? of things. The thing is, I didn't want personally. I didn't want to move on to any other consultant until we heard definitively that he either yeah. was or wasn't. Right. Um, so I think he was like, well, if we can't get a hold of this guy, I got to start moving. And he started moving without me, no, without, without me, no. He was ready to, he was ready to hire someone. Were, yeah. They were available. It's just, yeah, way ahead of us. But I mean, my concern here is that this, while we can state our, our desire, this is under the ZBA's control. Well, but it was based on our recommendation. Uh, well, That's the, uh, but, I, I put this on the agenda, not just for, uh, the ZBA's purpose. I put it on for our own. Yeah, right. for all, all projects. So it's for all projects. I, I understand. I just this particular one, I think, was. I agree that we should we should include this language, but I think they were moving on a different timeline than we are able to. So, I, I think wow. there are extenuating circumstances, um, and I certainly. Um, as, what is Ezra's last name? Please? Glenn. Glenn. As a Mr. Glenn is he has a very limited role in what he's doing with the ZBA on this particular one, which is as a facilitator. Right, but if you're facilitating and, so, and we're making a recommendation, I think, and that first of all, but he's facilitating and, and he's doing things at the direction okay, of so the ZBA. So you're defending Mr. Glenn. I'm not. So I'm saying this board had a recommendation. Well, and I'm saying there were extenuating circumstances. Well, I don't think so. I think he should. Well, luckily, today. luckily, it all worked. Yeah, luckily, it all worked out, and now we'll have these other uh, group of, of consultants that we can right. refer to in case of mm -hmm. right. when you know can, when we need one them. question in this group of consultants. Do we have the people, the person who, when we when we're looking at consultants a few years back, Eric right? Dahl. That's right. who I yeah. said. Yeah. That's yeah. the person. Yeah. That this is this last one yeah. here. Okay. okay, so he's the one who. Was up at the same time as Dennis right. the last So time. it looks like these were Thank you. two union studio. Well, these were the same, correct? But they oh, were okay. different because um, one was there was two different emails. Correct. But but I but I right. believe it's the same. So yeah, the I don't the I don't think one's probably better. But yeah, I don't think this is necessary at the moment. I agree. So it's um, um, union studios architects is the principal. I believe is Don Powers. Yes. Oh, you do know good. Yes, good I Heather. do. Oh, and right. LDA yeah. is Tref La Black. Oh, right, who, who Dennis used to work with yeah. exclusively okay. before. And then, principal, yeah. you want to put them, if you're going to create a document, well, ultimately. Yeah, well, and this is, it's going to be a much more of a standard yeah. kind I think of they're form. all great, including. I was actually, because the union yeah. studios and LDA came mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. Maureen, but I have worked yeah. with them in the past. It's fantastic, Heather. Yeah, no, these are, we're not. We're, the two of us are heading in the same direction. The, the, I think the, some only, of us are clueless. Right, so I think the, que the, the <laughs> question. So let's go for the people who know nothing. The, que the question, really, for the, the board. In the next <laughs> eight minutes, is you know what's the next step in terms of is there going to be another time where we kind of all vote that these are these are you know certified design yeah, consultants that, well, that that we'd be willing to work with we something. That, it, would it be appropriate for you to just the boilerplate email to all of them and express and then definitely definitely would, we, um, just, uh, would this be of interest to you? It would be um, a, through. Would you need rates? So. Yeah, that we need the yeah. rates. I, I, I would, would, okay. yeah. 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 Rates yeah. Yeah. I would really like to have interviews with them. Mm -hmm. Well, that's another level, but first they've got to be interested. So that's, that's right. step one. Right. So okay, that's so that's an easy step. One is to approach these firms and yeah. say mm -hmm. that we're trying to have a pool of uh, 53G consultants that we right. could call up at any time. Mm -hmm. You may or may not be available. Whatever, could you please send your rates um, for you know design consultants, design consultants um, mm -hmm. you know hourly rate? They should yeah. understand. I think in the cover letter too that um, to, well it would be. I mean, Beth might have some ideas as well, but it seems as if the, it would, maybe it's just understood, maybe not, but with 53G, they do have to move pretty quickly. Right. Uh, and True. also, they are fairly low levels um, budgets, but they can be repeat. Um, so it's uh, the, in the, um, that's a big in the, what, I don't know, I want to say in the stable, I guess that's okay word, but um, just in the, uh, um, uh, list of recommended. Do we have a range of hours for them to understand what the scope would be, or do they do this all project the time? based? Yeah, yeah, it is very much pro so. Some of it's actually uh, like not, examples. Or? There, 
we could have examples, but really when it comes down to it, they're going to always add, they'll give you an hourly rate, but really what they, what they're going to give you is a, they want a scope of the project. Um, right. Because if it's just, depending on what the ZBA votes on, let's say they want a design consultant to just look at landscape and architecture, but not traffic flow or, or not necessarily traffic flow, but, um, you know, uh, entrance, you know, exit, entrance and exit ways for pedestrians, for example, which landscape architects do as well. Mm -hmm. um, urban designers do as well. So it's right. going to change. It's going to change well, with... Yeah. So you Union Studios is a planning mm -hmm. also, if my understanding. Union and Studio... You were both good, but what? Union mm -hmm. Studio Architects is also community planning mm -hmm. in addition to architecture. LDA is architecture and interiors. Right. You're good. So mm -hmm. like in the CBD, mm -hmm. um, if we have you know, maybe LDA would be more fit for a, um, like the Elm Street project would have been a good mm -hmm. fit for them. Mm -hmm. um, Union Studios may be more for the Main Street where we're also dealing right. with right. the circulation of the site. Perfect. Um, Eric. Uh, I just mean Dom information well. that we're giving them about the kinds of projects we would Yeah, are we going to be telling them kind of what they're, so they know what, they'd what be they getting will be into. doing? Well, I think that I would think that we okay. talk about where we have used design consultants, yeah. which has which and has examples of our, what we have used them for. Would exactly. they be interested and in? And so, with the example That's of Main I mean. Street, there may be er, larger urban design issues um, that we'll want to address, such as traffic configuration, but, like uh, right. for seven thirty seven thirty five. Yeah. Right Sorry, yes. Yep. Um, and then on top of that, um, we I think a cover letter should say that we also. Um, are encourage uh, we are recommending well we're permit granting so you'll maybe you'll want yeah to it's say both because we could be CBD so or that cover yeah. letter might need a few go rounds yeah. because it's going to be a big uh, but I think the three of us mm -hmm. but Heather is welcome your experience with this but I think we also want to state that we might uh, we also contemplate holding withholding money so that the project can be overseen um, and reviewed for, before closeout so I would mm -hmm. uh, I think that's partly what you're saying scope would be the sorts of expectations right. yeah. that I have. I think, yeah, that, that totally makes sense. Um, it's in green, ready ready for me to do. Good. Thank you, yeah. Um, we can help. Thank you. No, yeah, that would be great. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, um, so do we, maybe to we'll, send that letter, do we need to have a vote or are we all set? Mm, um, we ha or directing mm, you to do it? Yeah, you're going to, and if I, yes, if I need help from the, the chair, I, we can figure that out. Okay. Can I look at it of course. No, 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 no. Heather, did you need to look at it? If so, then we need to bring it back. Okay. <laughs> so everyone, okay. Are you? I would like to see it. Okay, so let's bring it back yeah, next week real hopeful. quick. So we'll get, you'll, you'll do a draft, send it to everyone. For 12 Thomas, back to Brian, and then we'll meet so, as a um, planning board. Also, just a heads up, the, um, the River Street 4DB, the, they are meeting next the day after we're meeting they're meeting on december 18th mm -hmm. for design that's cool. the first meeting that dennis is going to have a report for Good. which means that even though it's going to be just one day before the zba we are meeting next week on the 17th mm -hmm. and we need to have a discussion on the design mm -hmm. yep. so we have not had we've had a very high level discussion about the design that basically like all the thing we said was there was a very large change between the first round with mass housing and then the subsequent round with ZBA, they got rid of a lot of the brick and then they did it a, more of either yeah. lighter brick and paneling. Uh, so, so it's still some brick, but it's, it's, it looks different is mm -hmm. the point. So when you write the memo um, for the board, the way you make recommendations for special permits, and this is actually a special permit, can you um, write something about that so we already are alerted to what you so I had, yeah I already wrote had written this me this memo was distributed uh, yeah a long time a long time ago so I will yeah, exactly I'm gonna throw that back in um, that's Perfect. it's unaltered it has because nothing has changed since the origins uh, original one so um, so yeah I will have the um, what I'll put in there is the original mass housing letter that I wrote and then the ZBA letter that I wrote already. So um, you guys will see the differences in those. Um, okay. So just a heads up, please get that binder out. It's this it's thick. Not, not like this um, <laughs> take a hard look at, <laughs> we're gonna be solely talking about design. We're not, we're, you know, architecture and meeting? design Good. at that meeting on 1217. No, the whole meeting? No. We won't have time to, to do that. Converse I wrote down. Do we have Converse coming in? Converse is coming. So they were going to be coming in then, but I now believe they're coming in in January. Okay, that's better. That's, yeah, they, they pushed off. 
Um, so just um, obviously you're going to be getting uh, packets this this uh, this week, or you know, sorry, Friday. Um, so it'll all be set. Um, but one of the I don't know how long we're going to have. It might end up having to be a very efficient 35 minutes kind of thing talking about architecture and design. So um, just I'll make this. I'll say it again that please 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 take a, a chunk of time. Mm -hmm. to come up with your own the more you can reference pages i know you know it's, i don't know what it's like a this or c something but it would help if you can even if you've got your old memo sure. if you can just plug in mm -hmm. where they are because mm -hmm. there's so much um it's you know, a very thick it's very thick yeah, yeah. Um, conversant in. okay okay all right so um do we have a motion to adjourn or actually a motion well, yeah, no, it's okay. an it's continue an adjourn to a time certain is actually appropriate too. Yeah, continue to eat yeah. thirty. Yeah, so moved. Mm -hmm. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Come on in. Um right. planning board members, I had
Hi, Winky. Welcome back. We are continuing with our meeting. Um, so from 7.30 to 8.30, we are going, uh, the Master Plan Steering Committee is meeting um, to, and our consultant will be with us shortly. We're going to go around the table and introduce ourselves and everyone in the audience, just so you know, we are on camera and you are being recorded. I'm Heather Von Mearing. I'm chair of the planning board. Uh, Brian Zakelli, town planner. Uh, Betsy Greger, uh, planning board. Do you have Jerry as planning board? Gas Collette, Master Plan Steering Committee. Sherry Winkleman, Master Plan Steering Committee, Precinct 8. <laughs> You're welcome to introduce yourselves. I'm an interested observer. Okay. John Serbier from the Housing Partnership Board. Savannah Nicole Vialba, Assistant Planner. Heather Hannon, Planning Board. Maureen Meister, Planning Board. Pamela Court, Master Plan Steering Committee, Precinct 5. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Jennifer Goldson will be joining us very, very shortly. She's running a few minutes late. Um, Brian and I thought we'd take this opportunity to talk about today. We had a meeting with all of the department heads in town at once. It was, an, I thought, an extremely productive meeting. We got a lot of information out of all the department heads, and I thought maybe... Um, some of the information, I took notes during it. We, I take this time while we wait for Jennifer to come in um, to talk about some of the things that were discussed and how it really was set up is we all start at the table. Um, she, Jennifer went through the, the schedule, how all the department heads fit into the master plan, and then broke us into different groups of three to four people. Um, and I was an observer. I think you participated, and uh, Jennifer also was an observer. And then each group was given three questions of what do you need to achieve these goals, what is unachievable, and what um, things uh, are your thoughts um, regarding the goals that she produced to them. And she had all the goals that came out through um, all the stuff that we did in the forum. With all them. 97. All 97. <laughs> okay. um, and so we all divided, um, and um, they took notes, and she has all of them. And when we returned... Um, it was interesting because the way that the groups ended up being, it was actually by more like category. Um, and they, a lot of, there's a lot of similar threads running through all their conversation and their thoughts. Um, a lot of support amongst all of the department heads, which I was surprised by on certain topics. So um, it's just because I know the planning board really wants to know, um, they, there's a lot of discussion about um, HR and looking at things through a tech lens of where the technology is gonna go in the next 10 years and how as a town can we get there with that technology. Talking about grant writing expertise on staff that they need to free up themselves um, and what would the scope of be of that grant writing expertise and the focus of the grant writing. Um, the role of the town hall over the next 10 years, um, a lot more out of, out of um, automatic in terms of the data collecting on the technology d payment process and how as a role of the town going to go forward with that and as they have always been very service minded inside this building um, looking at um, still continuing that service but in a different capacity and <coughs> freeing up themselves because there are less people coming through the doors um, they talked about um, they needed to be a tax base um, and through the tax base, they would like to see businesses um, that are specifically tech and medical specific um, for all sorts of different reasons, came through in the conversations. Um, there was uh, talk about health and stress, um, community engagement. Aging in place. Aging in place was a big topic. A big, a big topic. Um, there was the DPW engineering, and they all worked together as one group. Um, they note that there's a lot of funding of the studies, but very little implementation there after the studies. Um, so they would like a stronger process to follow through with all the studies, especially for transportation. Um, they also would like um, everyone to recognize that they have the things that we plan for as town meeting members and as government, and thereafter what is planned for and what is mandated by the state. And so a lot, of, um, a lot of us are not recognizing that what is mandated is not, is kind, sometimes comes out of the blue. 
and they're not ready for it because there's, they're overbooked with things that we're planning for. And it's not just the planning board, it's everything that everyone is planning for down the road. Um, so that not using that word in response to planning board, but um, the congestion um, that we're gonna deal with is gonna be um, over the top and we have to deal with residential fatigue of those projects. Um, they specifically asked that um, the DPW and engineering not be the party responsible for trees on private property. They did say, for clarity, I did ask for clarification that they do think that it is doable to do tree bylaw, but it has to be through site plan or special permit process, yeah, not through standalone. Right, but I'm just speaking as the chairman of the strict tree committee. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you might run into some problems with that, and which is why when we're talking about street trees, those are those are public those are public trees. Yeah, they really were concerned about how and, and we trying move to do, into try, the private. Try, and then trying to do you know mandate things on private property, it, it, that could be a real tank. But we've been talking about wanting that on the planning board. Well, so, yeah, clear clear cutting, not so much the single yeah. tree or there. It's more of the clear cutting so they, of lots preparing preparing for exactly. for new development exactly. is the problem. So they did feel comfortable with that. They, yeah. I guess, in the past, some people have felt like they wanted the DPW to go inspect lots and make sure that they're keeping up with their. And that's not. Um, okay. yeah, we're not happy. Yeah. No, uh, but they wanted to make sure that that was clear in the in the planning. Um, they talked about street diets. Um, that diet. for some reason that's what they're called. <laughs> road, road diets, road diets. Um, and what they were saying is a lot of our projects like paving and stuff those are really rather, rather inexpensive projects but when you start adding street diets or road diets the cost increases dramatically thereafter so when is the appropriate time to add in the diet and when is not and when we're just paving streets it's not the right time to do it and we have to do it more and with our funding studies can you define, can you define that term because it's, 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 narrow, it's some of it is simply just narrowing the street width in order to um, allow cars to go at okay. a safer speed. It still sounds as if it'd be a lot cheaper to coordinate that. There, there's still paving, and yeah. you're still know. moving curb. The thing right. is, it's you're moving curbs. I got it. Totally, yeah, yeah, but yeah. It's even the so, yeah. if, um, and it's a the, longer the, decision process, right? And it's a costly. Well, maybe so. it should be more effort should be made to upfront schedule all of it so it all happens at once. I, I, well, I think the I think through what we've um, one thing that the department heads asked um, was like well what what's what what are we really hearing like what are the three main things that we're hearing and you know one of them without a doubt is safety for pedestrians uh, cyclists and, and even um, uh, drivers as well I mean mm -hmm. so specifically related not just to traffic but traffic safety right. um, mm -hmm. and that's where this kind of comes in. What, one of the ideas that was brought up was actually taking it and giving, instead of going through capital, creating a standalone fund for, our, um, for those projects. Um, so they always know that they have X dollars to work in so that they can plan. So while we're doing the funding of the, pro the studies, we then know what we have to work with to complete the actual physical construction of those projects. Um, they asked for some of the stuff with our integration with MBTA to be removed. It's not viable. And um, uh, business parking, they really felt that that should be a high priority. Um, uh, the building commissioner had a lot of interesting comments regarding e permitting um, and that asked that we actually don't go to e permitting because there are components of the permitting process where um, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but what I, my interpretation was is that you don't get the direct contact with the builders and when you want them to do something, you have less control over it. Mm -hmm. um, I, when he said that, I asked for clarification at the end. Um, that does not mean he doesn't want online access to our documents. It's that he doesn't want the permitting and the sign-offs to happen online. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Mary Ellen helped clarify that the technology component of access to our documents is not what the issue is. It's actually the e-permitting process. Um, there is um, the trash, um, um, the staffing and the removal of the trash. Um, when even though we're going to online payment, the staff to reconcile it is actually a lot of work still. So even though as we move through online payment processes in town. Um, You're talking about the transfer station. No, I'm actually talking everything. about everything. So the online payments, Excise there's taxes, still a lot of back work behind to reconcile the books and 
to uh, double check that the payments came through appropriately. And so even though we are going to online payment, it's more convenient for the residents. It's not always convenient for the staff. Or if it's not, a, it's not like a, a, a time efficiency thing for staff. It's pretty much the same amount of time for them is what they're saying. But it is a convenience for the residents that is um, important. Right, so, yeah, now, so, so as more volume comes through the door, that's where the issue is. Potentially. They, well, they said it takes about the same amount of time to reconcile the oh, yeah. payments as it is if you're doing it. Well, you're doing it. You're, you're usually doing it at the end of the day because you're taking what you're doing is you're bringing up, you know, everything that's happened on the day and then, you know, and then reconciling it at the end of the day. So if something um, starts starts to go awry, you know, chances are you're going to be catching it pretty pretty darn quickly. Sorry. No, the uh, police and fire had a lot of interesting, um, that's actually why I sat and eavesdropped on. Um, over time, we're going to have to, we only have one ambulance currently, and we're going to have to move to two if we continue to grow. Um, because well, Mostly for mutual aid, right? It, or, um, because 75% yeah. of their calls for the fire department is actually medical related. Mm -hmm. And um, they are seeing an uh, increase in um, our population uh, for 65 and over, which is increasing the medical calls, which is increasing their pull on their staff. There is discussion in um, some of the strategies about um, developing Cambridge Street, North Main. Cambridge Street in particular, there's concerns because we don't have our station out there. Is not really up to par to take on new development out in that area? Um, so they would need support there. Um, there was a large support for an economic development department, um, staff of three mm -hmm. at least. Um, uh, large support for technology advancements. Um, how can we move people in groups? Large support of CPA funding, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. Actually, from almost everyone there was in large support of the CPA funding. Um, and I think that's, oh. Um, and uh, the Jenks came in with talking about shared housing, co-housing, and density and to create more uh, interaction and less separation. Um, but that was a standalone comment. And at the very end, we had a fabulous discussion, although it was more me listening. I wasn't part of it. But the staff had a fabulous discussion about, um, about communication and conversations of how how as a group can we be better at communicating mm -hmm. and really talking about out of everyone, everyone would like to have a staff member who is responsible for public outreach and um, something, I mean, something more than a social media coordinator, um, without a doubt. Um, a publicist. <laughs> yeah, well, a communication, a, a communications expert kind of thing. And the other thing was a that came out of the engineering department was some type of sustainability coordinator due to all of the um, new regulations with MS4. Mm -hmm. um, if you're familiar with that, uh, we won't go into that now. But the idea is that there's going to be a lot more work related to sustainability, whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have to accommodate that. The one thing that came to my attention, which is kind of... Um, something that we haven't talked about but was I realized is so the rec department um, was present the rec director um, the inter, inter interim reason, interim um, and what became uh, clear is that the rec department is struggling but the residents really want the rec department to be live and to be strong and not only for the health of our youth and the drugs um, and all sorts of other things. I also talked to the health um, afterwards. That right now, the way that they're set up with the schools owning their land and directing the buses that can get to their students to them and the access to them is hindering their ability to actually be what the residents want. And so the question was the schools are coming in one, the rec department kind of fell. There was no way to define in any of the documents or work we did where the rec falls and all that. And I would think with the Jenks being high up and the schools being high up, the rack actually is up there with it as well. And with the amount of out cries we heard in town when they closed the youth center and the damage that that did mm -hmm. to a lot of our youth to not have that space available to them, that that might actually be something we want to consider of how can we get our youth center and our Jenks. We, Jenks is some of the goals in here how can we get the rec center to be at the level with the Jenks to support 
And I had a very good conversation with the chair of the school committee today to say, all right, either are you willing to let it go or are you ready to take it on? That's really the big question. And if you're ready to let it go, you know, we need, we need you to let go of it and let, it, let them fall under Lisa's because she has the ability to push them and we're allowed as government to give them the supports they need or we, it falls under the school committee and they, even though it's not their mandate, they have to say that this is equally as important to the students of the community. Um, and at the point, they don't have the ability to take it on. So, um, but they haven't talked to it as a planning board, so that's only the opinion of the chair. And um, so that's something that I would like to have considered bringing, because that helps the, just from um, the health department is talking about the youth outreaches struggling in town. The school is talking about the mental health capacity. There's an increase in drug usage, we know, and so all around that rec center will help so much as we go down the road with the increase of everything else going on. So that might be a goal that we missed that might be worth considering, but that was brought to my attention today. And the safety officer too, the safety officer right now, right, is under the thumb of the schools, because he's in the schools. Um, that is working fairly well, um, but, they're, but they acknowledge that the rec center will help even so much more. Oh, please come to the table. Come join us. <laughs> oh. Um, uh, oh, and then they had some other strategies that came out, too, for traffic, and uh, Jen has them all. So Sorry. there you go. That's the general. There was so much wealth no, of information no. that came out. It was a fabulous meeting, and um, they came in. I asked them all to be blunt when I spoke to them independently, and they were. <laughs> so it was, it was great. It was a fruitful discussion, and that was a very comprehensive overview. Thank you. Well, I didn't want to leave anything out because I want to make sure the planning board, everyone knows about it as much as possible. Good. So did that take away from some? That was great, yeah. Heather. Yeah, I can skip a couple slides. No, I, I wasn't going to be as thorough as you, so that was that was great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, well, thank you. I'm really sorry I was late. I made some mistakes in terms of the way I should have gone, and roads were closed, and it was a mess. But I'm glad anything? to be here. No, you didn't miss anything oh. other than Heather's fantastic update <laughs> on the department head meeting that we held at um, 11 o'clock this morning. We... Um, a few, a few people came in late, so I know we've already done this once, but yep. can we just very super quick go around one more time? So, Brian Zakelli, Town Planner. Uh, Betsy Kreger, Planning Board. Dave is Planning Board. Carrie Layton, Precinct 2. Uh, David Miller, Conservation Commission. Jen Goldson, Planning Consultant. Dennis Collette, Precinct 1. Sherry Winkleman, Precinct 8. Tom Servier from the Housing Partnership Board. Savannah Nicole Vialba, Assistant Planner. Heather Hannon, Planning Board. Warren Meister, Planning Board. Pamela Court, uh, Master Plan Steering Committee, Precinct 5. Heather Valmeyer, Chair of the Planning Board. All right, sorry. Jennifer, please continue. That's great. Thank you. So um, we're getting really into the meet today, and I know we don't have a lot of time, so I'm doubly sorry that I was late. Um, but I believe we're ending at 7.30, is, I mean 8.30 rather. Is that right? Okay. So, um, so what I'm going to say is I'm going to run us through... Um, everything I planned, but it could be that we're not able to make all the decisions that I'm hoping in the time we have. So what I'd encourage you all to do is give it some thought over the next couple of days. I don't have a lot of time because um, we are going to be writing the plan next week. But if you have things that you want to give a little bit more thought to, um, look through the document I just handed out. Um, if you could please just, you can just send me individual emails if you want, that's fine. Um, just remember you can't have a full group discussion on email, so it would be better to either send your thoughts just to me and Heather and Brian or even just to me. It's, a, it's up to how you all want to run it. But I just want to put that out there because I'm going to go through this relatively fast and I don't want you to feel too pressured to make lots of decisions in the next 35 minutes. Does that sound okay? Thank you. Okay. So um, I keep saying this over and over again, but the, the whole purpose of where we are in the plan right now is to prioritize and uh, not have uh, essentially what we have right now is 97 or 98, I think I counted 97 strategies, um, and that's too many. So what I'd like to do is talk about narrowing and prioritizing, and I have some ideas and I hope you don't think that was presumptuous of me, but I wanted to put something on the table for you to consider. 
I've looked carefully at the public forum results from November, and I've also um, very quickly processed what I heard this morning at the department head. And I spent the afternoon, that's why this you're just getting this now, because I wanted to integrate the department head's um, thoughts into the considerations. So I have gone through all the strategies that we um, uh, have been talking about over the last few months, really, and presented at the public forum for feedback. And I've given my recommendation for your consideration only, and I'm not expecting any kind of rubber stamp. Um, I have a few that I'd like to discuss, because I wasn't quite sure the feedback was not clear. Um, and then I have others that I'm suggesting we take out. You may not like that. You may want to either leave it in or rework it. Um, and then I have others to keep. And I actually, I actually have some to add. I didn't put it in my little legend here, but the red is either stuff that I'm suggesting we wordsmith um, or completely adding some strategies that reflect some of the comments we've heard lately. Um, and so what I'm hoping to get is less strategies um, than perhaps we have now. I want to quickly review the project schedule and just anchor us into where we are and what's coming up next. I'll also quickly review the forum results, just the main takeaways. And I'm actually not sure. I was at a conference last week, and I know Anna and Avery finished the summary of the forum, but I actually don't know, and I realized as I was driving here that I never asked if you all got that. Okay, so I'll make sure it's, it is done. It was done last week. They must have just been waiting for me. Also, you did interviews with um, people yes. on design, with design backgrounds, and I would love to see some sort. Somebody yeah. must have taken notes. We took it. notes on everyone, um, and we also interviewed just a few department heads. Um, we put it out to everybody, but just a, you know, I think the timing was a little tough with the holidays, mm -hmm. with Thanksgiving in there. Um, and then we also interviewed a couple of select board members. How many did I, you, how many? Uh, total with the no, innovator? The select board members oh, the select board was just two. Okay. Um, th the third tried to contact me, and it was really my fault. I didn't actually see that he had signed up. Um, and so we were trying to record. He had signed up like a few minutes before his our time. schedule. Yeah, I looked at 1.30, and I think he signed up at 1.31 for a 2 o'clock appointment, and I didn't look back again. So. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so we have raw we have raw notes. I'm just trying to think of the best way. Um, okay, we can talk about that. Yeah, well, I think something that we can take away. It, it might not be trying to make it all like a pretty kind of. I wonder like if we I wonder if we combine all the raw notes into a document that you because we did give an, the impression. I don't know that we said it explicitly every time that these were anonymous and they could right, tell. Yeah. 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 But I wonder if we kind of combine everything into kind of just a running list. Whatever works. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll give that some thought. That time and yeah. Our money, right? No, it was very helpful and I'm glad that you suggested it. Um, okay, so I'll review the forum results very briefly and I don't have to go too much into the department heads now, but I did mention a few key takeaways and then we'll spend the rest of the time going through um, what to do about the strategies and what the um, recommendations are that I've given you tonight. So we are at the end of phase three and we're spending the rest of the month writing the plan and we'll give you the first draft of it um, on New Year's Eve or before. Uh, so that's why tonight is such an important meeting and the next few days getting back to us quickly so that we can really capture um, a first draft that even if it's going to be changed, at least you feel pretty good about it and that it's captured uh, the essence of what you're hoping for. Then we head into phase four um, in January and we'll meet with you on the 14th and we'll ask for your feedback on the draft uh, before that and I'll give you, I've, that's on a Tuesday I think, so if you could plan to give us feedback the Friday before. That would be helpful to us so we can look at everything that you're looking at. We'll give you the comment matrix again, just like we did before. Um, and then we'll revise after that based on your comments and submit you a revised draft by the end of January. Then we it'll be ready for release for public comment, public hearing on February 10th. And we'll revise again. And then uh, you have one more meeting in March on the 10th before 
the planning board uh, hopefully will adopt the plan at the uh, March 24th meeting. Amazing. So that's everything we've talked about, but you can see we're getting closer and closer, and it's really all happening right now. <laughs> Any questions on the schedule? You've seen this before, but um, okay. All right, so the public forum results. So first of all, thank you. We were so pleased with the evening. We thought that the turnout was decent. You know, sometimes you wish there'd be 300 people, 500 people, but we got, we counted, some people didn't sign in, but outside of the committee members, we counted about 50 people. That's not bad. Yeah, I didn't think it was bad at all. Um, but the thing that I was really happy about was when we went through, we went through and basically transcribed every single post-it note um, and, m you know, marking on the, the dot votes that we, and we were really pleased with the, the breadth, but also the depth of responses. People were really thoughtful and they took a lot of time to comment. Mm -hmm. And I got a lot of um, great input, f you know, really on every single strategy that we presented. And it was a lot, it was 97 strategies that we had up around the room. Mm -hmm. And people really spent the time and, um, and gave us their comments on it. So, uh, so we were very pleased with that. Um, some of the main conclusions, um, you'll probably remember we had high rank, we separated out into things that have been consistently higher ranked, lower ranked, and then things that we saw divergence and we asked a bunch of questions to probe around um, the differences that we saw in the community's feelings on those. And so the high ranked goals, people were again, you know, generally supportive, had they hadn't seen strategies before. Um, we did find that three of the strategies in the high-ranked goals had some mixed opinions. Um, providing any kind of tax or financial incentives to attract in different industries and businesses. We had a few different strategies around that, so we'll talk about that tonight. Um, tree protections, more on the private property. And so I think that really that just needs more clarity um, around what that means. And you talked a little bit about that a few minutes ago. And then road diets, I think that people had mixed feelings about what does that do for, you know, the roads are already congested and this will slow. Tr so it's the typical kind of uh, conflict um, when you talk about traffic calming or road diets or whatever term you use. And not to say that those things should be taken out, but, um, but you'll see that I did take some of those out. So we'll talk about if that's what you want. Low ranked goals, we didn't actually offer strategies um there, there were two reasons for that one we felt like we had so many strategies they were already weighing in on and those were lower ranked goals to begin with and second um is that a lot of those lower ranked goals are supported by strategies that we had came, come up with for other goals because a lot of the goals are related to each other um and then divergent goals we found that participants were generally supportive of the strategy ideas and there were a lot of them um, but the, the things, the four things that got the most mixed opinion were using public funds, again, it was related because some of the higher rank goals, some of these things overlapped, um, using public funds to create incentives and attract private businesses, um, reconsidering that stormwater bylaw was very controversial, um, and, uh, and we had just thrown this out. You know, sometimes I throw out things that I think will probably be controversial, but I like people to dig in a little bit. Um, so we, we said, what about managed retreat in, um, in flood prone areas, buying up private properties, cost money, it's ex you know, expensive, where's the funding source? It's a lot of questions around that. Um, but that was definitely a more controversial one. Um, and, uh, and I don't think the protecting threatened historic structures was as controversial as the managed retreat, but we had put them kind of in a similar, um, uh, light in, on those boards. Yeah, I was surprised by it, and I do think that it was the perception of people there that this came from the planning board. So I guess I thought that was not, it was, oh, it had a negative impact. Uh, yeah, know. maybe I should have made that clear that actually none of these ideas came from the planning okay. board. Yeah, <laughs> they came from good. either the people in the community or things that either my consultant team right. came up with. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to make sense, I'm sorry, I might get the language. High ranking goals. Yet it's got mixed opinions. Few of them, yeah. So, so the high ranking goals, they were high ranked from previous. Okay, that's the way. Going yeah. into the meeting was high ranking. And then we added strategies for them to comment on. Okay. And most of them people liked, but 
a few of them were more controversial. Gotcha. And do you have a sense of the demographics of the 50? It's a good question. We didn't ask yeah. any demographic questions. I mean, you, you a lot of they people were, were there. Yeah, it was skewed a little yeah, bit older. Skewed yeah. The, yeah. They all like yeah. pizza, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. free, free is good, right? Yeah, free, free is, is good. good. Um, and then the last one we had, uh, you know, we hear this from time to time. Oops, I didn't mean to bring that up. It'll disappear in a minute, I'm sure. Um, delivery of town services and look at potential reorganization. And some people latched onto that, but, you know, most actually didn't. Most kind of turned that to, we do need better communication. Um, Don't bring up the topic of trash pickup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'll go over this very quickly. Um, we did this uh, discussion. I don't know if you already went over this, Heather, in the beginning. A little bit. Okay. But these three questions weren't exactly I said. So. Okay, yeah. And these were what we asked them. We had given them homework two weeks ago where we gave them all of the strategies and the goals. And we asked them to fill out worksheets. Um, two, two worksheets, actually. We asked them to look at the goals and tell us if they had any ideas for metrics that they felt were measurable, and we asked if they actually have baseline data or not for each one. And, um, and then we also gave them another worksheet, this was just before Thanksgiving, where we gave them all the strategies and asked them to fill out any that were applicable to their department, really. Um, ideas around <coughs> how it could be implemented, if there was capacity to implement it, where funding would come from, if there's funding needed, uh, what a timeline and any sequencing. Um, so really we're looking at how to <coughs> create an action plan and getting there. So they did those worksheets and we didn't go over them in detail today. What we did was we really focused them in on these three questions and they worked in small groups together. Um, where is capacity lacking to implement any of the strategy ideas? And you know, we knew that they would focus in on their own departments, but we wanted them to talk to each other as well. Um, what are some ideas for overcoming any capacity gaps? It could be more staff, more funding. Um, and then we also asked them about what ways could implementation be coordinated for maximum efficiency. And we didn't get a ton of feedback on that, but I just wanted to put that in their mind too, that if they saw any opportunities, especially talking with each other, cross, you know, interdepartmentally, um, to kind of be looking out for those. And then, so I really boiled this down. Um, so some needing additional capacity, economic development staff or even a department, um, uh, grant, grants writer staff or grants coordinator, they use both terms, uh, sustainability coordinator, communications coordinator, and then they talked, some departments, including transportation and some of the other, or engineering rather, talked about funding and, you know, that all tied back to the grants writer. But they also talked about um, CPA, as Heather had mentioned, and there was actually quite a bit of support in the room, it seemed. Yeah. Nobody really spoke out against no, the idea. nodding heads. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, and then uh, we did, I did ask them, are there any strategies that they would basically nix because they either weren't feasible for some reason, like they couldn't figure out how to get, you know, reach that gap or fill that gap for capacity, or they were problematic in some way um, in terms of enforcement or other externalities, service needs, or what have you, or they're already underway, and part of a way to minimize what is in the plan is to look at taking out things that you're already doing and that you are already committed to doing, and so I started to do that tonight as well, or this afternoon. I'm just going to keep on blasting through so we can get through. Okay, so I have two that I want to dive into a discussion on, and I italicize those in this document. I am proposing 17 for deletion, but you may or may not like all of the ones I deleted. You may want to just rework some of them. Um, eight for possible addition, and I almost hated to put additional ones, but as I look through all the public feedback, at the forum and then some things that the department had said, I thought, well, I should at least pr present these or maybe they could be s sort of wrapped up into other, oh no. And then I, and then I'm proposing two for substantial rewrite. We're all flipping, so can you answer are those in here? Or they no? are, but they're not in that order, but my slides are in this order. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, these are kind of coded in my little weird and system of, with of it, italicized and red lines and yeah. The okay. Oh, okay. So the first one is around Cambridge Street. Um, and so some of this was flagged as unrealistic that there's not enough potential here. Um, also flagged as problematic in terms of it being um, mass DOT and coordination in terms of transportation improvements. But really this focuses more on private development opportunities and zoning. And so the way we wrote it tonight, and this is, you haven't really seen it worded exactly like this, and I, I did redline it on this document so you can see what we changed, but this is coming from my subconsultant team um, just to, to clarify it. So undertake a study, clarify desired outcomes, key develop, redevelopment sites, and I've shown sort of the area I think we're talking about in terms of Mahoney's up through yeah. maybe the Elks Lodge. I'm not, I'm not yes. sure if you go yeah. that yeah. high. Yeah. yeah, we do. And um, understand the real estate market, um, identify, create design guidelines, and that could include street design guidelines, working with MassDOT, um, and then examine the transportation infrastructure issues. You know, some of these are just tied together, and then amending zoning. And so we didn't feel like we had enough answers to advise you on how to amend the zoning at this point. Um, and then we just added... And this is a longer strategy, which I'm not crazy about. Some of this can, we can format this differently and put some of this in an explanation. But we wanted to just make sure that we were clarifying there's a lot of residential neighborhoods right all around this corridor. So we wanted to be sensitive um, when you're looking at you know, redevelopment options and redesign um, and design guidelines to just look at buffering and how you integrate that into your, into your planning. So that's what that whole last <coughs> paragraph is about. So I guess my question for you is, you know, uh, some people have said, oh, these uses are never going to go away. Why bother planning for them? Um, it's a high risk right now because the way Mahoney's, the planning board's talked about it, and, and I chime in, the Mahoney's right now is zoned for single family. So if they went to sell, it goes all to single family lots or 40B or something. So, um, and Bonnell Motors is a lot of land as well. If for some reason they... Go to e online car sales or something, whatever they do. They're they're very stable in terms of businesses, both of them. But right now, it's not zoned. So if any of them choose right. um, to change, or even Mahoney's has extra land in the front that they could sell off. Um, so it's been something that kind of hasn't ever come to the forefront. So it got brought up because yeah, I think because Mo Allen, I'm speaking for my neighbors here. My neighbors in Mahoney's yeah. <laughs> they live two doors down from. I mean, they are, they are very committed to the town of Winchester. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, so I think you fact, need to fast sort of factor that into the mix as well. Yeah, it's just changing the zoning so we're ready if someone wants to sell their business. Yeah, it's thinking or, long right. term. Yeah. And right. it did happen with the Pansy Patch because that was right. not, and right. I have to say, as the person who definitely picked this up, it was all but explicit on the part of the attorney representing the developer that if we didn't, um, it was that was zoned actually for single family. But if we didn't get with the program and basically let them do what they wanted to do, uh, they would press uh, move it along with a 40B. Well, that could have actually gone to commercial across the street or mixed use because and actually tried to work with the Mahoney's, which has a commercial component. I mean, it just had we had no we had no opportunity because the zoning was there for single family. Mm -hmm. So it's something that's a high priority of the planning board. It may be low priority for residents because it's not going to have much impact in them, but it's something we need to prepare for. So Absolutely. it's something we have to do right. as Can a planning I board. Can I make a statement about that? It just, it seems like when things happen in town and then town officials react, yeah. we're trying to be what proactive. You, add, you yeah. end up having, the, you have people in town, residents saying, that's not a high priority because we have all these other fires that we need to deal with. Right. And and handle and then something happens and we yeah. haven't done any of the background work to be prepared for it and then we react in a way that might not be ideal and then everybody all of a sudden is pointing oh, fingers at every town official right um, many of whom are volunteers um, are sitting here right and now get, <laughs> and they <laughs> end up Heather, she's getting paid. No. <laughs> and they this end up getting way. yelled at why didn't you do a better job and it's exactly for this reason it's sort of is that if we if if we're not proactive and we're not anticipatory in these kinds of things happening and how we're going to handle it, it's a disaster Great. for later on. No, People are whining about 40B now. Why didn't they plan better? Because they were putting out a bunch of other fires and nobody else wanted to deal with it back then. 
literally no there's staff. no staff to help us yeah. no staff. anyways this was more of why it's on here is we know we have to take care of it it's not yeah. it'd be nice to have it one just thing i see missing though i would love because i every time which isn't too often these days but go down route 16 through wellesley and i just think mm -hmm. it's a state route and it's so much nicer um, and it's got not here Wellesley routes, right exactly and in Wellesley they're able to get um, it is uh, and they have the same thing we do we have Ambrose school and kids mm -hmm. going to McCall and going to the high school and just penetrating Cambridge Street so I don't see anything explicit there but that really to my mind would be a very high place and I don't know what's going to happen with the, nor the 40B on the northern end but mm -hmm. we've got uh, denser residential coming there I think safe to say no matter what so um, we need to design that Cambridge Street for road access, and I, I would like to put that as not access, zoning. Yeah. That one's going to go back to our friends with their budget that we were just talking about. You mean the Church pieces. Street intersection? It can be higher up, too. Yeah. It should be several points. Um, and again, it's like Wellesley did it, so we can, too. And it's a state route. Uh, the argument's often made, oh, well, that's the state route. And they, it, so this it would impact the nursing home as well? Uh, nursing uh, um, Gable, uh, that's not yeah. a nursing home, excuse me, but it's just a, 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 a big difference. Right. So is that not covered under number four? Is that extra to number four? Well, I think it's... She's it's saying it's not on the map because that stops at Wildwood, yeah. right? Like you want to go yeah. further. Yeah. You oh. want to go further south. The boat club, yeah. Oh, okay. So go further. The whole thing. It all I would, should be. It's I all would definitely fact. caution yeah. against not having, especially in a 10-year plan. I mean, Bonnell is very stable and Mahoney's is very yeah, stable, yeah. but if... Mm -hmm. If for some reason the people running Mahoney's, you know, end up in a market basket type family squabble, who knows what could happen there? Or if Ford, who knows with the auto industry, um, things can change very quickly and companies can go bankrupt. And who knows if Bonnell might, because they're based on Ford, I mean, it could be that Bonnell is very stable. I think if we don't think about mm -hmm. what could possibly happen in 10 years and we're not prepared for it, it's going to come back and bite us in the ass. So I do want to move on to the next one, but ideally, would you want to see preserving the commercial tax base? Would yeah. you want to see mixed use? Yeah. Yeah. Commercial. Well, we all agree to the extent we can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Commercial. But there's one other that if we're talking about the whole corridor that should be looked at, cause, and I could probably just turn around, but the, um, the country club. Okay. What about the country club? We need to including look at that in this in the area a large site that um, mm -hmm. again it's nobody's going and right now it looks good but yeah. you, you just we want to get the zoning I mean um, I know I know people have said commercial around here but some of these properties would be perfect for large-scale housing developments as well mm -hmm. so I guess given we do have this uh, those are large sites that we're talking about and well, Mahoney's is commercial by now is commercial so I think Moving property that's not commercial into commercial is not likely to happen. So I guess, I'll, I don't know, maybe the planning board will ultimately have to take a vote before the master well, plan. No, I was just saying I was going to vote for mixed use. A lot of people around here said commercial. <laughs> we, we are so low on commercial in town. That's my view. That's right. true. That's but true. if Bunnell goes, and what will we zone it for? Just keep it commercial? Commercial. Commercial. Yeah. But then we put just... Commercial. Right now it's single family. And actually... It might even grow up more. Who knows as time goes on. Um, okay, we'll go to the okay. next one. Sorry. Okay. I do know. We haven't talked about it really. So. Okay, the next one, and there's only two of these that are more the in-depth conversation. Um, so I think people just didn't really understand district improvement financing. Maybe they thought that it was, you know, taxing them, but it actually isn't. So we had this in there. Um, Page five. And... It, Oh, thank you. Yeah, page five. Um, and so basically the way a district improving financing work is you can, if you, you know, declare a certain area a, a diff, you can project how benefits that, you, you know, um, improvements that you want to fund will uh, increase the tax revenue because the property value will go up because of improvements that the town wants to fund. And you can basically borrow against that projected tax increase um, so that it doesn't actually raise anyone's taxes directly, but then you can borrow funds and then the town can make improvements, whatever it is. It could be streetscape improvements, it could be other, it's usually physical infrastructure improvements. Um, and then people's property values will go up in that district and you pay off the debt 
um, of borrowing from that increase. Is there a Massachusetts, you know, golden example? <laughs> we could come up with some examples if you want to keep it in. There's, I mean, there's a lot of the examples are more kind of gateway city um, areas, um, but we could find a more um, comparable one, I think. I'll break down the case, maybe. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it, it sounds uh, it sounds exciting. Yeah, uh, I think people would be interested in learning, learning more about learning it. more about it, mm -hmm. um, just because it's not something that we've ever talked right. about ever ever in Manchester. <laughs> um, but it has my interest peaked. And so there are probably a few areas you could think about it. Do you have an air, you know, North Main? North Main maybe? is, North Main is yeah. in lights right That's now. That's what in I thought too. For, yeah. So by districts, you say districts to borrow funds. That implies that it's the property owners in the district which yes. can borrow. So it's not something that the town borrows. No, the town borrows it. You draw the boundary of wherever you're wanting to basically have the district. And then you borrow funds. You mean the town. Meaning the town, sorry. Meaning the against, town. Against the revenue. Against the projected right. future it's, revenue. It's written as the districts borrow funds in your... Oh, I see. Does, yeah. Yeah. That could be... So I'm just wondering who actually gets the money. It's the town. I believe the, it's the town. It's not um, the individual. But it doesn't... Yeah. If you actually look at the second one, I think it says the district you know, because okay. you're, you're restricted to use it in the district, so you probably have to keep it separate. Um, Right, but then if you don't use it to pay the debt service, you know, like if you have money left over, then you can put it in the general fund. So this is different, for instance, from one, a business district. It's worth looking at. Yes. Yes. Worth members looking members at correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's not for future tax revenue increases. It's future tax revenue, period. Um, I think it's the increment, the difference. It's the, it's the revenue that's generated by having created this. That's my understanding. So you're not raising anybody's taxes. You're just creating something Correct. that didn't exist before and collecting taxes. And Correct. You, I mean, the taxes will... You're gambling on appreciation, basically. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's so how risky it is. That's, that's what I want to know. Yeah. How risky it is. Well, yeah. right. I think everyone in the value of the properties go up, right. and therefore you collect incrementally more taxes. Right. And you hope that you can determine whether the value has gone up because yeah. of improvements versus something... No, it doesn't thing. matter why it went up. Yeah, okay. I'd love to see some yeah. successful implementation. Okay. Possibly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We so what we wanted to do when we write yeah. up this, the, the plan is that. give you some case studies, too, and we can talk about how or if they're also integrated into the plan itself, because we're also trying to balance making this straightforward and streamlined and not too heavy with text. So it could be that we... We'll think about that, and you can advise us. But yeah, I mean, yeah. eventually, this might just get taken out. I, I don't I I mean yeah. I, I don't know but it's it seems like it's it's something that's new that like I don't know enough about this it seem it seems like it should yeah. at least so we'll be. we'll put it in this first draft and give you more backup information whether the backup information is incorporated in the draft plan or separate um, we'll determine that as we go okay. is that okay, okay. Great. you had something yeah. to say Jennifer yes. I have a question mm -hmm. uh, the town has just created a municipal housing trust yes. Uh, and one of the challenges for the trust is to come up with funding sources. You've said this is only applicable to commercial areas. Why is it not also um, applicable to it's not only to a multifamily applicable, residential area? Yeah, it's not only applicable to commercial areas, but that's where it's used mostly because that's where. But that's, couldn't it? Yeah. Couldn't it be used for? A, Maybe a, if you saw a benefit. Housing development. I mean, you'd still have to create a district, so you'd have to think about. An, an area of the community that could include residential properties um, or development sites or redevelopment sites. Um, it's more common to do this in commercial areas where you do, you know, you'll fo you'd probably focus on streetscape improvements, maybe traffic calming, um, other things that kind of benefit the public realm, usually. It's not, it doesn't mean you can't do it in residential areas or multifamily Areas with multifamily properties maybe would be appropriate, but the examples that I've seen have been commercial areas. Yeah, I think, like I creating think. a park, creating an open mm -hmm. space mm -hmm. that's near. I mean, that no doubt increases property, uh, residential property value. That's like a no-brainer. But it seems like that could be something that could be easy, but 
if you have the land. Okay, so let's keep going. Um, so I have, I think, let's see, three slides I'm flagging for deletion. Not slides, but well, I have three slides with multiple strategies. And I've, I've stru stricken them, I don't know what you say, striked them, struck, struck yeah. them in the document here. Um, but I, I took out, utilize tax or other financial uh, incentives to attract more professional offices, medical and small technology. People didn't, at the forum in particular, really didn't like the utilizing public funds to support the, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the same thing, same reason for the second one, B4, utilizing tax or other financial incentives to attract green industry. Um, C9 I ended up taking out for a couple of reasons. Um, one, the department heads uh, pointed out a number of issues with green roofing that make it maybe not as practical and it may not, in terms of priorities for looking out over the next 10 years on what will have the biggest impact on meeting your sustainability goals. Um, this seems like one of the more minor um, uh, strategies that would have less of an impact because of the complexities of the roof structure being able to support the weight or other externalities that happen like rodents or uh, water <laughs> oh, issues oh, and mold. I have mold. challenges with ice dams with lawn on top of my roof. <laughs> so you can tell me to put these back in, but that's why I, I took it out. Um, E21, it wasn't, it's not adopt a tree by law, it's adopt tree zoning and yeah, so special permit and site plan. Yeah, so I think what we need to do Just is change the language instead of take Strict that. Yeah. Restriction or yeah. something or oversight. And it's, it's, it's oversight. Site plan and special yes, permit. We do have some tree related bylaws already. Okay. Why is the tree one on there? Where pe people didn't like it? People didn't like the idea of, um, you know, some tree property. ordinances affect any tree over a certain caliber right. on private property, no matter why you're taking it down or what, tree, you know, you have to basically, uh, some people take it down anyway, but you're supposed to ask for permission, right. like a building exactly. permit. We, 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 we will we be have talking that in our street tree bylaw, by the way. We, 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 bringing it forward to this planning board, but putting that what I just Wait. said. Yeah. What the but, staff said is they'd like to see it through the special permit and site plan through for construction. So if you're pulling a permit, it triggers that, not through if uh, anyone just. But we would no, no, like no. To it's it's it, I pulling a permit. Anyone. I think is the entry point. And so, yeah, well, so if we do put keep it in and we talk about it, the bigger issue is a staffing to manage that, and there is no right now mechanism well, to staff. I would say the biggest issue is town meeting. <laughs> It's not even town meeting, but if we go and we oh, don't okay. have the staff well, to implement right. it, then Which it's... Which is more of a challenge, but right. there's, okay, two challenges. There's a conceptual challenge and a practical challenge. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, so what I'm going to do... We I'm can gonna, start with the site plan. I'll reword it and keep it in, yeah. and then you'll have more time to vet it um, after I that. I want to make a comment on 821, because we have a beautiful large tree in the house lot behind us. Mm -hmm. As new owners have come in, they have re-landscaped uh, that lot in a way that is guaranteed to kill that tree. And it's, it's not very a direct, sad. It's not a direct. They're not, because yeah, they're, not they're very short-sighted. Uh, they, they, they think they're improving the lot, but one of the things, the side effect, is they're killing the tree. We've talked to some tree experts, and they absolutely agree. Yeah, okay, and then we'll, then what will happen also is, and that they will end up they will end up with water yeah. in the basement. Yes, yes, guaranteed. Yes. Okay. So again, give me comments in the next few days. Let me just keep going with these. Um, if I can do this. Okay. Uh, people talked about MBTA. You don't have a lot of control anyway. So why not have a priority? Um, Bus access, that's another MBTA, you know, issue in terms of changing routes and there were other uh, things that get people to open space and rec um, in alternative modes in the strategies. Um, this was something you're doing anyway, so I struck that. Um, this was something that would cost money um, and it would support private entities, so I took that out. This one, uh, plan for strategic managed retreat was controversial. Integration of, um, oh, basically the town, some of the comments I got from the department heads were, you're already doing this. Um, you're already coordinating the open space and flood mitigation. So I took that out. So ML, the smart routes to school is not something that people don't like. No, it's just that the town's- We're working on it. We're already we're working, on it. To working on it. So putting it in here 
Um, it's sort of d double it's dipping. redundant. Yeah. yeah. If I if I put everything you're already committed to doing um, to say continue to should do should that be a separate list though? So if someone didn't know we were already doing something, yeah. we'd well, I th I've done that for plans before. Um, the trick is it would if we did a separate list, it would need to be comprehensive. I wouldn't want to just pick and choose a few right. things that I happen right. to know about, right. which I'm not saying it's impossible, but I would definitely want it to be something that's comprehensive. These are all the things you're already doing. I, I perhaps. Into one of the strategies, probably with communication, uh, that the town should make an effort to advertise and of what they're already doing. All of those types of things that they're doing. That's a good idea. Yeah. Right. And I like the idea that the master idea. plan would say we support these initiatives that are mm -hmm. underway. Right. In case they were to be removed. Exactly. I think that I think that's actually a really good idea because I think there's a lot of things that we are already doing which is the product of a lot of work that's taken place over the last, say, 15, 20 years. And, you know, to the extent that people can be aware of that, I think that's great. But I think we just need to be a little more careful about how we phrase right, it. All right, well, let's, it. let's keep that on the table. I, I noted it. And um, for the plan you're going to see in a few weeks, I'm not going to do that. Okay. Um, not because I don't think it's a good idea, but just because I want to focus on the new things. Exactly. So to add and rework, there's, I think, two slides here. Um, we didn't specifically call out Washington and Swanton Street. We didn't specifically call out every single potential redevelopment site. We focused more on areas. Um, and I just wanted to make that transparent. If you want us to call out specific sites like that, um, we can do that. But that would definitely work against our goal of minimizing. Mm -hmm. Well, you do specifically call out Cambridge Street. Yeah, I call out like a, I call out corridors like yeah. Holton Cross, so North Main. There are other there are other commercials. That site has to, I think has to be named. I mean, there are other commercial property businesses on Washington yeah, Street. It's just well. Encouraged development. It's not as concentrated in. One so do you want me to talk done. about the that cor the corridor, the Washington it, Street corridor? It is currently being done. The encouragement. The problem is it's stuck with the family, and the family is having sure. so. But regardless, I think the master plan has to name that there's an effort to encourage develop. I just think it, it could be. Yeah. Yeah. A sticky note that goes out on everyone's copy, but if we ignore that site on the master plan, yeah. it's going to be a fur in the saddle for the rest of our lives. It's that would go to the economic there. development so component. So it could fall under when you're talking about the economic development. It's 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 part. I mean, there are other commercial sites, sites yeah. along Washington Street. This right. just happens to be the largest one. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, can you, to help me, uh, how are you dealing with multifamily housing in in these strategies? Because it doesn't. Jump we out at me we at didn't call out sites, we but we talked about integrating housing options and listed different housing types. And um, I'm not going to talk about that tonight because it wasn't it actually wasn't controversial, believe it or not. So we kept it in the same way. Wait, wait, but it's it, in, wait, wait, in wait, this wait, document. Where is it identified yeah, in here? Um, there's a section on OPQR. Thank you. So around O. But which ones, which ones of those are is dealing specifically with multifamily housing? Yeah, the one uh, OPQR5 is talking about expanding where townhouses, two-family and multifamily, including garden apartments, to increase housing options. Um, and that is really directly from the HPP to be consistent. But, but we didn't specifically I mean, say... I, I viewed that as a very small-scale multifamily as opposed to larger-scale Multifamily. Well, I didn't specify. Okay. Well, so that I think, in terms of that level of comment, right. email me. Right, right. Yeah. Again, we. I guess I. I'll be the one to say this: that this board has to discuss. Our board has to return to our meeting. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm concerned about being here at eleven o'clock. So I would say the same thing for all of these. Mm -hmm. If you think any of these should be added, I did include them in red in this, so they'll stand out. Yep. And I kind of stuck them where I thought they would be appropriate. Okay. Um, but tell me if you, if, you know, what your feelings are on is, those. Is this has this been electronically sent? No, I can though. Yeah. yeah I think, I think that probably the highest chance of success. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'll send it out as a Word document, and you're welcome to redline it if you want to, or whatever's easiest for you. Yeah. you send it over redline the red line. Well, sure. For those of us without Word. And, and you'll put a hard. I'll put a hard deadline. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Friday. Whatever, whatever it is that, that you need, just yeah, tell I'll us. I'll send it tomorrow. Today's Tuesday? So, yeah. So I'll send it tomorrow morning or tonight when I get home. And um, if you could get it back to me Friday, you know, by midday, let's say Friday noon. Is that realistic? How about Monday no. at 9 a.m.? Um, how about over the weekend? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, really crunched, I'm really crunched for time You're right going now. really That's into draft all. mode. We I understand. I just personally don't have tomorrow or Thursday evening to look at it. Could you do it any time over the weekend? I can certainly do Get it, it by yeah. Saturday evening. That'd be great. Okay. Thank you. One question I have about the very last one is whether that's moving into the school department, um, but maybe not. Anyway. No, that's the rec center. That's what the, the rec, rec center, center was talking about. So it's the is rec and the janks. Is there a way to clarify the, where that's heading? Because I read it as uh, mm -hmm. what's happening for I think the I read, third yeah, graders. I read it the same. Yeah, it, making mm -hmm. explicit that You've got other, there are other that ways. it's not talking, although it's school it's age youth, children. It's youth, it's yeah. youth wellness and create safe spaces. It's going to like the youth center oh, fair, and the rec center. Fair. So if we change it from I student to youth. So just a gen, yes. please um, well, clarify. Seniors too? Okay. I was gonna say yeah, well, the Jenks is in there. The Jenks is in here. My comment was just great stuff. My comment was to join the two. Yeah, like this This one is a new one that I added about Jenks and rec department and lifelong learning center. Yeah. You could change this around, but yeah, that's I would, something I that I heard. If you put K1 and UVW. little five minute break real quick before we open up the planning board meeting.
All right, welcome back. We are going to call the planning board meeting back into session. Um, this evening, the rest of this evening, we are talking about our budget. Um, and at the very end, we'll be approving minutes for our meeting. Um, and uh, Lisa Wong, the town manager, is supposed to be joining us. However, her child is sick, so she's actually going to be calling in. Um, but um, I would prefer that we, since make her time as efficient as possible, given what's going on, why don't we have a conversation? And I told her in about 10 minutes, we'll call her and have her brought into the conversation a little bit. Um, so Brian brought to the table our budget for starting all the way back from fiscal year 18. Um, and let's have a conversation about where we are, where we wanna go, what we need to really do all the things that are coming down the pipeline that we've discussed with the master plan, with your department, sure. and and come up with a thing. And I, let's. It's, um, yeah, it's a little bit difficult to kind of integrate the master plan in terms of funding because we're still develop we're still developing the plan, and there's not a lot of money associated with projects yet. Um, can you, so before we start, could yes. you identify what these four pieces of paper in front of us are? Sure, those are just our previous budgets. So FY20, FY19, eight, and 18, and 17. And, and have, then the, there's, the only thing that looks different is wait, wait. that that is our current. We've uh, got a paper that goes back to FY15. Oh, that was probably the 17 one. And it seems to be overlapping with the 16 and 17 which is also overlapping with the 18. So, so this is my confusion, is there seems to be information spread across multiple ones, and I don't know what I should look at. I think the easiest thing to do is look at the most recent one, which is the FY20, and we just look at 2019-18 for now. Okay. I think right. that's probably the easiest. That's the easiest. The one. first so page, the top. So yeah. This so is this, the page which Yeah, is, we're going to look at that. And the other I'm thing, like, so we're going to be looking at two things right now that makes the most sense. One is okay. looking at the FY 2019-18, so mm -hmm. looking for the past three years. And the other is a snapshot currently of exactly where we are right now, which is um, it's a print off from Munis mm -hmm. that shows how much percent. Yep. So so percent of the our funds that are left in each of these categories. Okay. okay. So, um, what we had previously uh, done was um, we looked at each of our requests from just one year ago. That sure. This is what we've done every year. We look at the previous year, and then when we look where we are currently in that mm -hmm. munis sheet in terms of how we're spending our money and whether or not it's enough to cover what, what we think is coming down, down the line. Typically, we just go line by line and say, okay, are we having a discussion about this or not? So um, we can start with professional in terms of staffing um, and kind of go down the line. Um, I would, so I don't know if, I, I think most of this is actually pretty perfunctory. Um, you know, you kind of just go down the line. Okay, I've, um, in terms of computer supplies, pre right, stationary, right, right. all that right, stuff, right, it's right. just, so what we I think what you need to do is we we do need to have a detailed discussion about potential staffing in terms of um, getting someone uh, potentially on board that that is in house for design or if whether we're going to be having out some more professional services money for uh, for someone who's not in house but on but like um, technically a, a consultant it's a question of where's that money going to go. Um, and out, outside of that, I'm not really seeing a lot of major changes, um, but please, I'm totally, op you know, this is supposed to be an open discussion so that we can make decisions at our meeting next time. Okay, I have one more clarification. Do we yeah. ignore the FY20 request column and just simply focus on FY20 request with override? No, because the ones that we requested for the override were for um, here a full time planner, a grant writer, and a and this so which, CEO. So I would just use the FY twenty request. And so just for, ignore the one with and override. And ignore the override because our override requests were taken out. <laughs> Some of us recall. Right. Okay, so so <laughs> it's um there's no that that, that's no. not the budget that got approved <laughs> even. Work. So yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Um, so the grant writer, when we talk to Lisa, we'll make sure that she's coming in with that under her, her department or as a town-wide grant right. writer. That makes okay. sense. So these, these three have been, please, I'm, my brain is really not That's okay. Good. So we, we had originally asked for these three, these three positions, to whether either to be in, right. our, in our, de our department or elsewhere. Or elsewhere. They all, um, they all support they, none of them happened. So they right. haven't been funded at all? Zero. Okay. okay. This is yep. okay. Nothing got funded. But I have a question. Are these numbers including benefits? The 75 full-time planner was including benefits at a 55. So it was a 55. Oh, that's what I meant. Yeah, it was 55K for the position and 20 something for benefits. Okay. Um, and the others were part time, no benefits. Okay. Yeah. Um, I wonder if before it actually might make sense to bring Lisa, because she had, remember we yeah. had the meeting and she talked about she had goals and visions of where. Where these potential three things. Well, no, she had think, more, I think, more insight. Yeah, but I think I, I also am seeing things, and I know I've spoken to Heather directly, but I think that's the only person I've spoken to directly. So there are certain areas of interest that I think this little housing, uh, <laughs> and housing, uh, this little planning group um, needs and areas of expertise in-house. That's where the house works. Sure. Sorry, okay. crisscrossed. Um, let me just list them, uh, and then, uh, and more than, I mean, one person can carry more than one, um, wear more than one hat, but right. here are the things that I think are missing that we're looking to, for infill. Sure. One of them is the one that Brian mentioned, design expertise. Uh, this is not just when we get a big new project, and we probably will do a 53G. This is looking at uh, just the way we were looking at the house with the garage and wondering what could be done. Somebody who's actually... Uh, has a design background who's working in-house so that when we do review of special permits, they actually can look at it and start thinking along the lines of configuration and maybe even meet with somebody, because people often do meet in-house before they come, um, before they file a special permit. So I'll just leave that as design. Um, a different one is we're still eager to get somebody, and it could be Brian, but maybe not, um, with the uh, ability to go to the historical commission meetings and actually read the um, understand and read the uh, the Greek Revival House, so understand the local history and so on, or at least is keyed in. Now, this in theory could be a uh, contract position. I don't think it has to be a permanent position, but we need somebody with uh, rec uh, uh, the expertise, which is normal for planning departments, um, to deal with um, your historic resources in your community. Um, so that's another area, a bucket, if you will, or cap. But let's call it a hat. Um, the other one is affordable housing. I think Ryan's grown a lot in that, and maybe that's, it just stays where we are, um, but maybe not. Um, certainly we know that there is you know, another level of, maybe that's just, a, a, again, consultant or contract um, that goes up, but it could, really will need a permanent uh, or a regular contract. So affordable housing is another area. Um, then the last one is that I believe we've all talked about this at some point. We need somebody who's comfortable and I would say um, the way Brian presents to us his recommendations, who is our staff position going to the Zoning Board of Appeals. So that's also maybe a freed up. It could be something Brian wants to take on. I but can't tell. This so was this potential are, one that we had the 40K for the part-time ZEO. Yeah, maybe it's not well, even a ZEO. Might, it maybe might not even be a ZEO, but that, right. that's that but space ZEO, that you're talking about. It might be the person who's the zoning enforcement officer is not necessarily presenting for the planning board. And I've come to realize that it's many communities. In fact, uh, we did. I don't want to go too far into this, but there are many communities, and this board is aware of that, they, where somebody goes um, representing the planning board and our recommendations to the ZBA, because that can be different from what the zoning enforcement officer is doing, and I'm really big on governance right now and separating out you know, who's speaking for whom. So this is, you would call this a staff liaison? Yeah, that is, okay. we've heard about it at this table. So. Yeah, I just want to write down that, words. Is that what you're calling as a title, okay. the staff liaison? That would be fine. Yeah. For, I'm okay. a person who goes to the CBA. Yeah. I thought we talked about Brian and Savannah Nicole splitting, that that was one of the leading boards on the building. Wait, I'm just throwing out needs. needs. Uh, I, I don't remember. And we, that's our job, I think, for the rest so, of this um, till 10 o'clock, trying to yeah. till so, um, 45. I think... 
I think you've outlined needs that nearly everyone, forget this board, that nearly everyone can agree with who's in yeah. the space in terms of ZEO, design review, historical commission. I, mm -hmm. um, I, would, I would also uh, add economic housing. development, but I don't know if that's not already yes. going to be taken So, over. yeah, so. Okay, good. Um, yeah, no, where right. I had envisioned this last year in terms of when we were doing the budget, mm -hmm. going through the override and talking about um, all of our potentials, the, you know, um, I had envisioned being able to bring on a full-time housing and economic development person. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt that even from the department heads meeting, which I was not um, prepared to, ha to hear the... Um, Really, support. yeah, <laughs> to really to hear the support for housing and economic development. Mm -hmm. um, I was very pleasantly surprised. I was not surprised by Lisa. Lisa is certain she very much understand, understands the need and the need that we've needed for 15, 20 years for a housing and economic development um, planner. They so, are different. They are different, but they they can be housed in the planning department. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And also Maybe. be. Um, a, a liaison with the manager's office, and uh, they would yeah, be, yeah. it would be someone that would that would work almost under both departments. Yes. So where, what's missing then would be the design. Exactly. So so what so what I what I yeah so what Education I was planner, thinking was a was a um, was sorry uh, of personal services for that to be a, a full time benefits eligible person doing housing and economic development with potential for um, where is it professional services and this could be the space yeah, where we could have we could have yeah. either whether it's in house whether we call it in house or not it would be obviously a part time professional services contract position right, right, right. so i i would obviously completely love both <laughs> both of those but that, that that and that's what we're talking about today mm -hmm. and 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 next week as well right. but for Kind of how we presented the idea of of having a part time person now mm -hmm. um, in Savannah and Nicole. The uh, you know my intention, and that's not necessarily the mm -hmm. town meeting's intentions or anyone else's. Mm -hmm. My intention was that, that it would transition. the The goal would be to transition to a full time, and then we would supplement with professional services money. However, we you know right. maybe that thirty five goes to eighty this in order to do multiple different types of things. To, um, and I think we all, I mean, the gen, we've got a general strategy here. What it does, because I'm, I think more than anybody, I've been the one who's gone through the personnel board and the job descriptions multiple mm -hmm. times, starting with before your predecessor. Mm -hmm. I've just, I've been the one carrying that, and mm -hmm. um, actually for probably almost the past 20 years. So, <laughs> I mean, this is something where we, I think, do. I think right now, what uh, it's feels really rushed to be moving into this budget and trying to anticipate because we do have to get some job descriptions uh, cranked up if, uh, for any full time and at that point we and I'm not the only one who's saying we need to any board uh, like the uh, finance committee and the manager right. are going to want to know what those job descriptions look like and I think uh, we should think about what makes sense in terms of what's likely in terms of somebody's mm -hmm. areas of expertise and we do see some groupings um, design and preservation tend to go together uh, more comfortably uh, and I don't know economic development and housing do strike me as rather different but those are my areas of specialty I'm not too uncomfortable with it because that can uncomfortable with what? I'm not too uncomfortable with doing it. I see the design and the preservation and the historical and the LHD support all and mm -hmm one person, which we currently don't have. Right. We're kind of piecemealing it with the, the staff we have. District, and the, yep, the Heritage, Heritage District. Well. I mean, that's like one meeting a um, year, but. And, just, um, and then the affordable housing is Brian's really strong strength yeah. component. Mm -hmm. um, the ZBA I support. Agree. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I mean, I. I, I, I I'm I, sorry, I, I'm giving you compliments. <laughs> I hope you're okay with it. Um, and the ZBA is where, like the liaison between, is where we one fall. Of our permanent People. It would be it would be a trading off probably of permanent uh, based on schedules and stuff because it's gonna be between Monday night those are on Mondays generally and so you have the conflict between historical and ZBA well, that something to talk with our manager about maybe that should be changed so that that's not a conflict honestly uh, I mean there are just too many people yeah, to attached to one yeah. night mm -hmm. of the week when we've got a bunch 
Wait, Heather, were you saying that the design and the historic preservation person would be consulting and not a full-time? At this point, I think we start with a consultant who's... Yeah. But a contract position. Yes, a so contract. So they're not yeah. uh, randomly Yeah, it's a contract. They have to be in here one day a week. Yeah, just like Savannah Nicole is right now. Can I, can I ask what... Are we starting from the bottom up looking at what's possible in terms of... I'm sorry. I'm confused as to how we proceed because I don't know that we have funding for all of these positions. So are we creating a wish list and then pushing hard for that to get more money from the town manager? Or are we looking at this existing budget and saying what do we fit within this 104,905? No, so, so that, yeah. So the, uh, the idea is that if we're talking about adding a full-time person that is definitely completely new. It's not working within what we have. It's right. a total, right. you would add 75, because that, that, that the 104 that there, that's the recording secretary. Right, so, so my question story, is, but, and, and that's under the, under does, the if, if we were to go to the town manager and say, hey, we need a new FTE, mm -hmm. and we need to increase our consulting by 20,000, excuse me, got a headache tonight. Um, Will she be able to provide the funds? That's well. So that's why we're that, that, that's, that's, that's you're talking about. That's the budget process. So we we, okay. we request it, and then sh and then the manager would say, I agree or disagree with this request. And she's coming on the phone and with then, us. And then that then so then her request then go to FinCom, right. and then what goes to town meeting is here's the planning board's request, here's the manager's request, and here's the FinCom's request. So they look at all three of those things sorry, I, to reconcile that. Again, I'm, my brain is at like 2% tonight. I apologize. We're creating a new budget. Like this is for budget. the new, but we're in FY20 right now. Correct. So we're talking about 21. We're talking about 21. We're talking about 21. I'm sorry. To, yeah, we have to get our budget to yeah, I'm sorry. by the end of the year. Right. The other question I have is just about our numbers, and we I can't run numbers right now, mm -hmm. but I need to understand because I, I, I know where in the classification the part i mean the new full-time would land where I, I guess there was some number that was just thrown it was out, yeah 55. it was based on a 55 what was, yeah. where was that in the class which class i mean uh, i don't know e um d um so C. that's that's what the that's with the the conversation with personnel but but, yeah, but we um, know what it looks like yeah i mean i could if i didn't if i knew i would have brought why it does in it matter if we're because it's an amount of money yeah but yeah. it that's was still based easy. it was still based on fifty five thousand. That's what it was based on. Do you know what that was? was it what the exact class numbers? No. Well, I don't need the letter, numbers, but... Yeah, you know, but it, it was, was still... It, and I assume um, that... I, I just want to know if it's... Is this realistic? I know we used it once before. Is this a realistic... In terms of looking at other comparable communities for part-time uh, planner... Or, sorry, full-time full assistance, assistance planners. Assistance really right. assistant level, planners. basically, yep. what we're talking about. 50, yeah. 55 is competitive. Mm -hmm. It's certainly um, above some of... You know, uh, above so some right. others. So but it could be get caught. Is there wiggle room it, in there? Well, so that's actually a very specific process through the personnel board. Are they aware of it. Yeah. yeah. So the, and they have to do their own study to okay. determine how, how many percentage of other communities okay. are above this and below this, and then they make their own decision. I understand. Our request, <laughs> or, <laughs> sorry, my request at the moment, and actually it wasn't just mine. We all talked about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was fifty five. Yeah. 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 Sorry, that was old news. I mean, that's forgotten. Okay. Yeah. And so then the other one is is the since I'm feeling really the urgency of getting our long overdue do staffing for this sort of design area and sure. preservation planning. Um, do we know what a re this person will probably come in at a higher level because that's how consultants work as sure. contract employees? And do we know uh, just uh, again? I'd like to see one day a week in office, and or it could be two half days, but something the equivalent of a day a week plus one night a month. Um, do we know what that adds up to? And, and obviously, there's no vacation time, so I'll probably throw out, take away a couple night, you know, a couple of those uh, days. You know, I just haven't done the math. So, and then this we would talk about. So these are the three things that we're design slash preservation because yep. it is called a preservation planner, mm -hmm. and actually, yeah. You can do P R E S, <laughs> P L. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's good. Thank okay, you. so see, so this is good. So these are the three things that we are talking about. I honestly, I think everything yeah, is else good. is really secondary, right? Yeah. Okay, so, hundred dollars an hour. 
one this day is, we work <coughs> is forty thousand dollars. This this is ZBA. Oh, I wish this I is. Well, this is sounded good. Well, <laughs> what? Two, two, but no, no. This is hundred dollars an hour. I just want to say. Yeah, it's forty-one thousand for the year. Okay. okay. Did Brian get that? Because I, I'm. I just made up hundred dollars. I just looked it at it up too. It's not. It's it's a lot of money. Well, Heather Hannon's math. I'll take that. It sounded okay to me. <laughs> you, how much did you do per hour? I did a hundred. So and how many hours a week? Hundred bucks an hour. That's yeah. these are wow. Contracts. Less than what 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 Krieger et al. were going to charge us for paralegal advice. They were going to charge us one hundred thirty well, bucks an hour. Lawyers get a lot more. Well, than lawyers. Yeah. 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 paralegal. Yeah. These poor design people. This wasn't right. even a lawyer. This was a. No, the designers just don't get. They can't. They can't even. They can't charge what even electricians are charging today. Okay. It's Pathetic. really. Okay. Well, okay. So good for us, I guess. Anyway, the, we're we're, we're trying to what we're trying to do. Fifty two hours per year. I did one day a week. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Days. Well, there that's fifty two days. That's fifty two days, not yeah, hours. Yeah, but then you have the problem of the night, one night meeting. It was just an average. I was just making some. Well, actually, it's um, it's uh, the ZBA meets once or twice a month. Oh, well, I think ZBA. We're going to ask our own uh, our permanent with two full time people. I think we have to ask for that one. I would. Yeah. Okay. That's this person would be just the design and historical, correct. which is design, yeah. So, um, so these are the three that are in play. The one, so this planning board staff liaison specifically to ZBA is, is that? No, that's you. It's you or it's you you and Nicole. If she's going that's, to leave. It's not a new position. Okay. It's a no, new that's duty. that's yeah, managing. The but we're also taking away some duties actually, so I don't see this getting. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's what I'm saying about how it'll all have to get. To so these. my question on the FTE is this: is this just an FTE to that's the hope. Santa Ana Nicole's position, that or is, is it hope. an additional FTE? That, my, my hope is to basically yeah. get the the thirty five k that we basically right. decided we're going to use all of for that professional for professional services. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get that out of professional services, make it a full time employee position with benefits, and then we still keep thirty five k in there. We do not want to ever lose. Right. We never want to go because under thirty five k again. Right. So no matter what, because right. we can definitely find use for that money. Oh, it's okay. planning. That's planning. So, right. so we're not going to two and a half planners. We're going to two planners. Plus yes. Seven. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Two plan. I, no, it would be two and a half. It, it would be two and a half. Right now we're one and a half. Yeah. So my question was, would this FTE be simply taking Savannah and Nicole's position? And going from a half to full time. And what you're saying is and then in addition yeah, to that, have that. whatever, we're not and calling we this a half-time, but it's a... We would retain the half-time position that exists, and Savannah Nichols would go to a full-time. No, one no day I don't see that. I see expanding a half-time position to a full-time and having a completely new one-day-a-week right, right. position for design professional. Okay. Design okay. preservation. Yeah, design preservation. A contracted. Okay. Contract. So that, that, was, that was trying to understand. Yep, so it doesn't fall under... This would, I mean, this would honestly... This would be great. <laughs> By that point, that's what that is standard for a community our size. Um, Belmont's too. I mean, this is not. I mean, it's yeah. not luxurious. Yeah. But we're no longer. That would no longer be. And we could not complain any longer. So we really do have to cover. No, I, I think that is board. Our needs should be I, satisfied with this level of staffing. Exactly. exactly. So, well, we have to remember. It's like when you go to Springtown meeting and you say, "It's like do this for us." And we won't whine at you anymore. <laughs> I, think, I think it's more of, if you look at comparable communities, I talk to a lot of planners. Right, right, right. No one can believe that I just hired an assistant planner. Right. They, no, they, they're right. like, wait a minute, it's only been well, you? And I was like, and even before me, it was only one person. You know, exactly. Nobody can believe it yes, at all. Can so we can, bring Lisa in? I, yeah, I just want to ask, so are we giving up on the half-time, right. the part-time oh, ZEO? I'm sorry? Are we giving up on the part-time ZEO? Sounds like that's yes. on the back burner. And that we're going to let the manager deal right. with that if that's an issue. Is, and the grant writer, uh, uh, the grant writer, that's, that's definitely a manager's yeah. thing. She is yeah. laser focused on, okay, uh, so, on that. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm just I'm trying to find it. Hold on. And we're okay in all the other categories. Here. Oh, here, she just texted me. Hello. Okay. Here, there it is. There's no tuition in here. Do we need tuition? 
We wanted him to go to more things, remember? Yeah, yeah the travel got pulled in the override. But continuing education is important. So, yes. yeah. so why don't we put something well, into issue? We'll get there. Yeah. We'll get there, that well, this little thing. We'll get there. Hello. Hey, Lisa, it's uh, Brian Zakelli and the rest of the planning board. How's it going? Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. I should let you know that you are being recorded. <laughs> You're on TV. <laughs> You're on camera. <laughs> Your voice. Um, so we have just been going through specifically uh, staffing-related um, expenses and talking about what we would like to do to expand the department. So as of right now, we have one full-time person in me and a half-time person in Savannah Nicole. Um, our hope is that we would expand the part-time position, um, that Savannah Nicole's position to a full-time housing and economic development planner. And then in addition to that, have a one day a week design preservation professional. So instead of so of going from one and a half to two and a half people, um, we wanted to see because at first we were talking about a potential grant writer, but uh, we wanted to see how it fits into your budget to see if you're potentially looking for a grant writer, um, and how the housing and economic development planner would also potentially be under the manager's department as well. Okay, so if I were to count exactly, you're talking about two full-time employees and then a one day a week person, right? So not quite two and a half? One and a half. Yeah, it's, it's half really days. well it's really two point two. The cost is yes. about two and a okay. half. The cost is about two and a half. <laughs> so we just cost okay, so yeah, yeah. Make yeah. sure I'm not missing any other um, FTEs in there. And then so I mean I think based on the department head meeting today, I'm just still absorbing all the con the feedback. Um, there seems to be a need for multiple um, tasks uh, that don't all translate well to a full-time FD at the moment. So you're right, we can't have a full-time housing person, we can't even have a full-time economic development person, a full-time grant writer. It's just, that's just too many FDs. So I, I do like sort of the incremental uh, movement towards that. And I'm, Wondering if, if um, you have that additional staff within your department, and um, we can do some training. If we can talk about some training in my department in particular, we could sort of share the role of grant writing for the first year and see how that goes. So basically, see how successful we feel we are in researching, writing, getting, managing. And then make that judgment call in here from now. So that would fall under yeah. your budget, Lisa, the grant writer? Yeah, I, I don't know if I can push for a grant writer in my budget right now because, um, I, you know, without committing myself to anything right now, and even though I don't watch camera, right. um, it seems like there's a big push for a sustainability director or manager or, or some mm -hmm. person. That person, as part of their job, could be also doing some grant writing. So if we start to do some grant writing in my office, if we are able to get a sustainability person doing grant writing, if you have additional staff that's doing grant writing, we might not centralize that in this next budget cycle. Um, yeah, I mean, there, I mean, at the department heads meeting this morning, the um, engineering department was very, very clear that due, due to new regulations at the state level, they are not going to have the capacity to keep up with the regulations that are necessary, specifically with MS, the MS4 permit. So, yeah. so um, um, that, that's just information for the board. I know, Lisa, I know you, you were there. Um, yeah, and that, I, I think there's a, there's a larger question right now about funding for MS4 and stormwater. So certainly mm -hmm. if um, there is either a, uh, a review of current water and sewer rates or whether there is an appetite for some other kind of fee structure for stormwater, then um, that pays for know, it. Then, again, we can talk about the additional resources that they need and then, um, 
because we still need, even if we are applying for research and applying for getting grants, we will need their manpower as well. So if um, we'll, have to, we'll have to definitely figure that out too. Yeah. I think it's tricky. Okay. Um, outside of well do you ha do you have any thoughts on the department i might be too early for you to tell because you're you're not really looking at all of the departments at once right now but but um you know do you have a any feelings on the department going from one essentially one and a half to two and a half people well i think excuse me i'll jump in i think do you want to hear what the thinking is about what we're um why we feel that so where we need to go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think the, I'm just wondering if the, the person who the one day a week is considered a third employee or is this really going to be a, you know, a, it's a contract. It would, it's it a, would contract. Be a contract through professionals. Your, yeah. Your professional services. So, if you're looking at you know, real staff, you're looking at going from 1.5 to 2. That's a better sell. That's <laughs> what is real. I mean, legally, that's exactly what we would be doing. Yeah, technically, it's um, not a two and a half. Yeah. You say right. technically, but legally, because that's exactly there would be it's a uh, we'd services. be going through right. a. Um, personnel board review, um, evaluation or assessment and a personnel a rating and a what, the whole process the whole thing, before yeah. it right. gets before the town meeting to create a position. So that's very different. But the um, contract employee is our approach to recognizing that bringing on yet another person is um, frankly not going to happen and not even maybe even reasonable given the size of the community. But it's something where we need different skill sets and as a relative, as a, an extremely small planning staff right now, that that's a good way to get uh, the skill sets yeah. we need. So te technically, I think, I think investing in the professional services also allows you to ramp up and down the kinds of design services you need, depending on the project. So um, you might have. Yeah. All these projects come in at once, where you need somebody five days a week. I'm going to jump in, you Lisa. Know, 40 and hours for a quick amount of time. Lisa, so this is where I think some explanations needed. That when there's a large project coming in, the good news is that 53G will cover it. And at that point, we will move most of that. Uh, the person who's got that part time contract person, we would see managing, but frankly, Brian could be managing too, that 53G outside consultant for a large scale project. That's going to be yeah. somebody who's a, probably an architect. Um, what we're needing in-house is someone to help staff our historical commission um, to deal with preservation issues. If we get that LHD passed to staff the local historic district commission, um, that person will have a strong background in um, preservation planning. Um, and it's a very different skill set from the architect. They're actually not the same. So the okay. architect would yeah. probably be coming in on 53G for the large projects, but project we actually project. need somebody who's here one day a week because that person will be evaluating historic resources as even same simple <coughs> special permit um, applications come in. So that'll be every week plus um, routinely taking, um, assisting the historical commission with uh, preparing materials for their meetings. Right now when they meet, for example, they don't have the B forms um, ready. They have to contract with, for the B forms for these um, quick reviews before a demolition, um, when, after a demolition permit has been requested. So that's routine um, versus the big projects you were just describing. Yes. Um, I also just wanted to um, make a clarification because technically um, the way that the money sits right now, the, the planning board is trying to go from one full-time position to two full-time positions yes. because technically we, do, it's not, we don't have a half-time person. We have professional services that is paying a, a quote assistant planner but it is it's not it's, not. it's it is not so we would so the cell is going from one full one fte to two fte so is there going to be a um some reduction in your professional services budget with that maybe? please no. please never know <laughs> no 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 because no. um, the idea is that 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 professional services 
would not only potentially cover this preservation uh, design professional, but it potentially might be needed for other projects that um, are outside of that. So if anything, that 35K, I mean, it might go, it would might go even higher. I, I, you know, we're going to work on that. We don't really know exactly what that's going to be, but that professional services money would cover this one day a week person and potentially some other one-off projects that we need to do. So that 35 is not going to do it. So it would probably maybe go from 35 to, to like, yes, 60. Uh, no, 75. 70. 75, let's be honest. It's got to I mean, that's a larger ask. Um, because then what you're but saying is that it's, no, it's there are no benefits, there's no vacation. I mean, that, so it is. Right, so that leaves about 50. It's still a lot it, cheaper to go then. No, with We're it, cognizant of the problem. Because they're getting paid on an hourly basis. So, but that would basically turn our professional services money, 40 of it, 40K would be for this one day a week person, and then 35 would be for routine business the planning board needs to do for random projects that, that we need to pay for. Um, so yeah. when we, for example, we used the professional services when we were working on the rezone for the center business district, we needed to bring, we bring in professional services to make sure to go over our zoning and right. to help us. Highland Ave. We brought, we right. brought Dennis in for Highland Ave to look at uh, right. alternatives. That was totally, yeah. we just, we ate, we ate all of that. We, we paid for all of it. Yeah. Um, and those types of projects, yeah, we need that money. Um, well, anything coming out of the master plan will, I'm sure there will be some rezoning. And as we've seen some defeat recently, and I think having a consultant coming in means it helps explain it to all those interested parties and move it into town meeting. Um, but Lisa, you're going to want to know priority. So if, we, if, we, if we're going to have to get down to this in terms of professional services, if we have to pick between having this one day a week person or have other money for specified projects, you're going to want to see a priority list from us or what? Uh, I think that a strong sell would be tying it to the implementation of the master plan. Right. Yeah. Uh, as well sense. as um, maybe for some of the, uh, for some of the design or I would also link it to some of the um, maybe sort of consequences of not having had that expertise in house and, and what that um, consequences mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay okay that I think that gives us enough to to kind of make some conscious decisions next week um, yeah and even though the master plan cost itself was a short-term um, financial ask, I'd be curious to know, because we have put money towards the master plan the last couple of years, so I'm sure exactly. there's, you know, at least some consistent investment in planning initiatives. Um, you know, if you factor that in, whether your total ask is about the same, if or more or slightly less. Yeah, because we we came in with a hundred thousand for the master plan or more, right? We no, we the last appropriation that we got was seventy five. Seventy five. Yeah, we'll do it. And that's where we're coming in. That's and so out of that seventy five, uh, all seventy five. Well, so it's it's very clear yeah. there was a, there was an article, it had nothing, um, and we asked for the seventy five specifically for the master plan. Okay. Um, that would yeah. Cover I mean, you can, like my thoughts are. Um, you know, sometimes there is a discussion about saying like a hundred thousand a year should go towards um, preventative maintenance. So a thought is maybe like a certain amount every year we can get used to seeing as part of master plan the implementation. Master plan, right. So like mm -hmm. the initial funds the last couple of years were about creating the master plan, and then maybe we should have some consistent funding that's about implementing the master plan. Yeah. I mean that that would obviously be ama amazing that. Um, that's why we need the full-time economic development and housing component. We need the design in-house. Because, no, I mean, because, because all those other functions will support actually additional revenue coming into the town. Yeah, and I think the idea about investing in staff so that we have capacity and 
potentially the ability to bring in money um, either through expanding the tax base mm -hmm. or getting grants Brand or yep. saving money because we're planning better um, rather than saying, you know, we're going to have 75,000 dollars worth of quote unquote projects. Um, right. So in the beginning, it might, you know, sort of investing in the staff and, and linking it to the master plan dislocation and maybe talking about how is this in the long run is going to be cost effective in terms of um, a better implementation of the plan would be a good way to sell it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree because that's something we've been working on for looking forward and working on for, God, 10, 15 years. I mean, it's been a long time. Um, Lisa, while we were talking, um, we didn't discuss as a planning board, but my question to you is about legal. Did you want to separate out what the planning board uses for legal out of the budget and put it inside the planning board's budget? So if you could propose a certain amount that you would need for legal, um, I, I think that might be... Talk to Art. Okay. I, I mean, I still I haven't quite thought through we don't have the, number the cost benefit of us right. separating out the budget, so at least you're managing it. Um, and having the same firm versus mm -hmm. having different firms. Well, it's because two contracts under, if it is the same firm, it's two different contracts, or. I think that's going to be tough. Well, I, I think what I, what I that's want to do is we do pay, we do pay a fat, that's not that. <laughs> we, we pay a flat sum of money. A lump sum. Anderson and Fraser, and there is sort of, you know, planning assistance embedded in there. Right? Yeah, right, exactly. Not, you know, not from the special projects, but there is some. But I, just, I want to make sure we don't, like, you know, pull out those extra, you know, one or two thousand a month, because that could add up pretty quickly. Exactly. Um, so what I would do is, uh, I think we'd have to say, I think the concept of pulling it out so that you can sort of manage um, is, is a potentially good one. I think we would need to maybe sit down and work on the numbers together. Okay. Yeah, maybe it's just itemizing those professional service, that professional services money and some of it being legal. Yeah. So that, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, whoa, that's going to look or, like a very fat you know, number. Or being clear. So even if you're managing it, mm. it doesn't mean that every time that you work with the town council, it, it comes out of funds, right? Because still, that's the, yeah. there's activity that you work with the town council that would still come out of the town's flat fee. So maybe it's more like we just need to be clear and, and, and right. um, I, that's, keep an eye out on, on a monthly bill to make sure that they're not separating out things that should be included. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's, it, you, that, you hit the nail right on the head. Because I think especially, you know, when you're going into town meeting, you just want to make sure that everything is so clear to every single town meeting member who's going to be voting. Hi, Selena. <laughs> so I, I'm confused. So um, what did I miss? So we like her. She's cute. <laughs> She's supposed to be in bed. <laughs> um, so I thought so that our concern about legal was because we had a special project involving looking at the zoning. And that was really a one-off. It may take several years, but was there... So we've, in the past, we had control of our, our legal. Yeah. And we lost control of our legal, and it's now under the direction of... Okay. Of, and so the question is, is pulling it back under so we can direct our own legal without having to go through approval we, and have the select board be... A thumb hold on our legals. So I yeah. think it has to do specifically with what we are going to use those legal funds for in terms yeah. of how we, we we can't just go to FinCom and say we need this legal funds. They're going to say, well, why what do you need? need what do you need it for need now it for? that you didn't right. need it for the last year? The idea is that there are probably two kinds of buckets of legal funds that we use it for, or three. One is um, the zoning that we write. So we would obviously need specific legal review for any zoning that we write for town meeting. The other is day-to-day -day operations. Crazy stuff happens every month that's, this, we've never seen this before and we don't know how to deal with this. Ways. Yeah. We, you know, weird stuff, call it whatever you want. Um, and then the other I would say is actual like special projects. Right. So, so um, 
The question is whether or not we should be putting extra money in professional services or not. I think it warrants more of a conversation with it, legal and Lisa. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I just know that I, I feel so eager to see the um, maintain this uh, what uh, money, the funds that we can use for special projects and the contract, I'll call it contract employee with the design slash pre um, preservation planning um, background. I, to throw the legal into the, that same pot just scares me. So yeah, I, mean, I think too big. I think we can get by without having extra money, but I, I don't. I don't know I what the. I don't know what is saying. If that budget can be managed differently, you know, the town's legal budget, so that we're not quite as. Um, vulnerable, really, for the times when we need counsel, which I think uh, any citizen would think we should have. <laughs> so, so it's well, a, a different issue. So, does this board feel like the current setup has had negative impacts? Yes, mm -hmm. but I, I do. I yeah. feel like it has Im it. negative impacts, not by anyone's intention. But I think, like when we're at town meeting, zoning should be coming through the zoning legal respective should right. be coming through the planning board. Right. If people want to talk about zoning, they should be talking with us present. Right. They shouldn't be pulling mm -hmm. on legal because they can to go talk to them independent. And so there's miscommunication, misinformation right. being, mm -hmm. and conversations does, going on. How does a uh, change in control of funding get rid of that? That's the thing I don't see. If we were in control of legal funding, how does it? For zoning. For zoning, how does that affect what you're saying? <laughs> I think I think the the select board could still ask any questions they but want I mean, or they need from to, legal, yeah. so it wouldn't necessarily make it exclusive to the board, the well, planning board. The, well, the problem is it's mixed, right? So our our staff is art, theirs is Mina usually, um, and so when but art is reports to the select board right now. He doesn't report. Really, we're not his point person. No, 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 you're correct. And so, really, when it comes to zoning, anything regarding the zoning should be the point person, should be the and planning the department, the planning board, board right. because that is what the state law says, not the, right. not the uh, select board. How does, but that doesn't prevent the select board from doing what they're doing right now. No. They'll still talk to Mina, and there still won't be a point person. Well, they can also talk to Art anytime they want. Well, no. Uh, so, I, I just. Stop them. I'm just, it's, I don't know how, con I don't disagree with having dedicated funds. dedicated funds. Dedicated funds. It's just the argument for having those dedicated funds, the it's scenario the you're describing. Their control isn't there. It's if we have dedicated funds, we have dedicated funds. So, yeah. so if, they choose, if they choose to change council, right, and we don't have dedicated funds towards zoning, we could end up with any legal team or any staff they yeah, want right, right. who may expertise you. may be more in contract law than in zoning. Okay. As right now, art is, has always been, prior to you being even right. a town council, was the zoning. I it's, think that's a very effective, that's, where I'm really that's an effective about. argument. Yes. So right now, yes, we are using all the same firm with different expertise among them, um, different for different expertise, but we really, should, the zoning, and they should know that the zoning, you know, comes through the planning board's budget, just like we wouldn't go and, mm -hmm. you know, go ask them about their, well, we can't because contract or, you know, right, the no, issues that I, their permitting issues or the ZBA stuff, we wouldn't go. And, well, I think, okay, so I think the task for us then is to, um, I can put, a, I'll talk to Art and get a rough number of what kind of he thinks. He dedicates to He dedicates to us. We can put that as part of our professional services. Lisa right. can, you know, do her magic and decide whether or not where that goes. Um, and, and so, you know, we have, it seems like we have all the information right. we need. One more asks, do we so want to? In, in addition to that, Brian, I think we should have a conversation with our and this team about the kinds of things you want to do around zoning and which ones can already be included within their current state. Right. I'd like, and then I kind of like to start there. Yeah. Just We're hoping right. everything is uh, in their current fee as of right now. So, but I, I was on the. Yeah, so I think, I think Brian's approach is that if you have a sense of the, the project um, that the planning board wants to do over the next year or so, let's get that meeting with Art um, and sit down and kind of plan out uh, you know, the, the time they can dedicate to getting those done as, as part of their current contract. So, let's start with that first and see what, you know, okay. what might have to be put off or what might be additional costs. 
Okay. And um, Lisa, when is your budget due to FinCom? February 15th. Uh, February 15th. Okay. And our budgets are due to you by January? January 9th. Okay, that's fine. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, are we good? I think we're good. All right, Lisa, thanks Thank so you. much for... Bye, Selena. <laughs> <laughs> lovely having um, you join us. Bye. Yeah. Bye, thanks so much for the, t <laughs> for the time. Um, good night. Oh, good night. Oh, good night. <laughs> good night. Good night. Good night. All right. All right good night. See you later, Lisa. Bye-bye. Bye, Lisa. Bye, Lisa. Bye, Lisa. <laughs> uh, that was great. Um, it's, just, it's just too bad we, we we don't all enjoy small children. Yeah. You know? In terms of, like, the re rewriting our zoning and stuff... Like a special project that way, yeah. I didn't anticipate that would be coming in in 21. I figured that would be coming out closer to 22 when we start working on that. I just wanted to make sure that whatever structure we have is there uh, any projects right now from all the stuff that we've been reviewing that we did want to take on that would be a special project for legal? Uh, private property trees. Yeah. So that would be us writing a lot of that, and then Still, ADUs but I, is the big one. But I, I yeah, ADUs would be a very large ADUs one. The, 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 the tree bylaw would not be. That's a two page. That's a two page that bylaw. Fits within there. Yeah, an ADU bylaw is going. It's just there's a lot because there's there's a lot. Brainstorming. Yeah. No. Oh, I'm, well, it's those are not. To me, the biggest thing, I think we're getting stuff, I'd like to read Jen's, is going back to the large house site re plan review and looking oh, at our numbers the, there. Yeah. The teardowns are still a huge issue, and protecting the small houses is another so one. So those, 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 the those, those types of things I think would be covered, there, that's not a special project. That is covered under what would be the, what, what I would consider the routine business of, of the planning board two times a year introducing legislation. That has to be part of uh, of their uh, so their struct their fee structure or so, whatever. So, um, Maureen, are you are you anticipating that we'd ask legal to review what our options are in terms of preventing? Project? How oh, would? No, no, no. Okay, so where, where where does legal fit into preventing teardowns? Oh, I'm sorry. I was talking about special projects for the 35 or whatever. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. I'm sorry. We're talking about legal. She was because she wanted to know if we had special projects. Well, the last time I remember where this board actually used our own budget mm -hmm. actually was the subdivision regulation. So it's been a while. Um, maybe we want to start with, in, I don't know if it can be done as uh, incremental, but we are wanting to get going. And maybe the one lump sum's too much to get legal to start working through the zoning bylaw and telling us where we they would recommend just well that's i think heather and i were just yeah. discussing that and you were, i think you were saying you didn't see that as i coming saw that up. more as 22 versus 21 yeah, but if exactly. we want to try to start in 21 then the, the time so one issue that we're having is that it would be really nice to have the master plan done yeah. by yesterday exactly. so that we could have an well, intelligent the, conversation about the budget as it relates to implementation right. of the of the master plan but here's another yeah. thought though because it is hard for town meeting and the manager to well I'll start it the other way finance committee manager town meeting to uh, deal with these huge lump sum um, projects and that zoning bylaw is a big one money can be encumbered so just getting a head start is not a bad thing so so stockpile well, if it's a spe if it's save, a save, yeah. start saving. Yeah, it wouldn't be professional services. It would be a standalone article, is what you're right. talking about or, for or, the or, rewriting or, or. of those. You know, so that that that's a whole that's, th that's different that's because that's or, outside or, or, of yeah, of, of the budget. I think the bigger thing for the budget, frankly, is we don't know what's going to happen. Just as we didn't know if who expected the Highland Avenue, whoever thought about Highland at Dana, I certainly didn't. As a you know, so I think. To me, it's more that it's more that it's just it can it'll reverse. That's fine. I think we do that with snow plowing. We can expect we can just say they do it all the time for legal. Yeah, the select board I mean, with their. Let's get real. Um, it's legal that you don't know what you're going to get hit with, and this board dealing with land use yeah, gets yeah. hit. People like suing us. So so they do. Oh, I I tell people that anytime 
there's a denial of a developer's project, they will always appeal, and they do. Right, and they do. Yeah. So, well, if you get approved, you get appealed here too. So. Right, so, it's true. So, <laughs> you get approved, you have to stop and shop. I know, I never think it's appealed. So this particular discussion, what's the end point? When, how are we going to escrow these funds? Or are we going to ask for, I'm, I'm that confused. That you work with Lisa on, I think that's so I So I think I'm going to, I'm going to have a conversation, not a, it's not going to be a very long one, but but, uh, but but with with Art and Lisa about rough rough money that's right. that's kind of that's used on the board right now, and whether or not we could do what we need to do within that framework. Right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, the hope is that we would not have the need at least next right. year to. That's not in this. Right. right. Um, and then if we do have a, a known special project such as a a a rewrite of the zoning or update, whatever we want to call it. That would probably be not in the budget, and that would probably right. be its own separate article at town meeting. Right, but but Maureen and Heather, you were both talking about setting funds aside for future use. It's and different. I'm sorry, that was scratch it. Just forget it. Okay, because yeah. I didn't. So, see so, so we're not looking that. to bring yeah. legal into our budget. We're looking to get allocated a specific amount of the legal budget exactly. that we manage. We're, we're going to see what they say, but yeah. So it wouldn't show up in here, but it would say that we're now going to divide it. And this part, the planning board, you report to the planning board for this dollar allocation. For this, you report to the exactly. select board and whoever exactly, they exactly. else. Exactly, and the explanation for that is pretty clear in the, in the, the sense that there are sort of different expertises. Yeah. I didn't say that exactly right, but anyway, but you get the idea. Well, we also are supposed to be independent of the select board. We're not exactly. supposed to be. That's right. Or we need to stay independent. It's very important that the. It is. Legislative and the jurors, <laughs> and oh, all no. the different branches of Executive. government stay yeah. independent of each other. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going. So where are we going to go now? Or well, I'm oh, going to draft it up. We're going to increase right. the professional services to include the design preservation person. Right. So um, I think that's what. So I think that's what this is. This is going to go. Mm -hmm. going down. It's going to go. At, it's going to get added to this. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, account, accounting for recording, and then the personal services is an account for a recording secretary. Why is that? Because that's also a contract, isn't it? Yeah, but for some reason it's, it's, it's or it should, it still it should. should be, but that used to be a town employee, in the, I mean a permanent right. employee, so that may that? move. Yeah, I don't know. Well, it was actually in overtime for like Correct. 10 years, Correct. and I don't know why Correct. it was in overtime. So I'll find out the appropriate location yeah, for the yeah, recording that secretary. I'm glad we Perfect. mentioned but, that. But basically, in terms bucket. of permanent, it should it should include myself, right? This full time the <coughs> full time employee, Correct. Here as a housing and economic development planner, Correct. And then the other staffing would be design preservation professional at 41. Plus thirty-five, plus whatever the recording secretary may or may not be in there. Mm -hmm. and what about where Suzanne fit in this? Suzanne is actually paid one hundred percent through engineering. Is that oh. not true? Because it used to be we had to sign. I did. It was twenty-five percent or something. We do not. We do not pay for oh, her yeah. services. Okay. Well, she does a amazing job for us, and I get paid yeah, for my time. Uh, she's well, great. She's <laughs> great. No, she's good. Um, okay. No, but that, that is a change from person? not that long ago. Um, she is on uh, medical leave at the moment. Okay. Do we have a backup? We so the 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 hope oh, is that course. the hope is that during uh, that these are being recorded and that um, that she will still from home be able to write minutes and submit. Mm -hmm. If that is not going to be happening over the next little bit, I. I I, I, we're yeah, going to have some couple, issues. Right? We have been, so so she has missed two meetings in well, a row. Also, no, the historical and the historical commission. And the commission really needs. I mean, because there's uh, no there, there's no Brian there. There's no Savannah and Nicole. Well, this is really more importantly, there's no video recording. Right. Oh, it, so it, we, no, yeah. yeah. So, so that's an issue. So that's it, it's a it is a it's an issue that we need to deal with. Right. And yeah. I don't know. Meaning you? Uh, yeah, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> the royal. Yeah. The room, because I, I um, want to note that we haven't. So, yeah. Moving okay. downward. Yeah. You can go back just for the history. I'm begging for the historical commission, because, you know, when they're, deal they're dealing with land use, too, and they're big got votes oh, yeah. on and they get slammed. preservation. Yeah. No, they, they, I, I'm not saying it's not a big, big deal. Yeah. I'm saying we can't just hire somebody else. For them, could you? Even just as a 
person just hourly? Because this is an hourly in. I don't know if there's legal like legal, legal issues with well, that due to medical. Like, it, I can help. No, but it's but not a permanent position. It's a can it's you, like contract. Can you just find that out? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, yeah. I, they're it's really struggling without. Uh, it's, it's like back to the dark ages. Yeah, it's important. Or can back we get them a? Chair. <laughs> can we can we get them a recording device at the least? Yes, that, 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 that yeah. It's terrible. Mm. I know that they All exist. Right, that, well, while I'm talking to Art, I can talk to. <laughs> there you go. Right, it's another this, legal question. We have human resources. You can. They might should be able to. Yeah, you don't need yeah. to have yeah. no, no, advice. No, you're right. No, no, you're right. Uh, printing and supplies. This budget. Did you get your uh, building code books online yet? No. But okay, it wouldn't so be printing a room. No, this is. It, it, that would be books. It would be books and periodicals. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh. Nice. Uh, Bedtime reading. Right. Well, you need, he needs to have access to that. I so agree. Can, but I, agree. I would. There's you? actually electronic versions. I just yeah. say get the electronic so you can Google. Right. Windows. I think. Or it, I think it is actually more than 300 for that one alone. That doesn't surprise me. Um, just you're gonna fill in. look it in, look it in, and fill it in, so you fill can always in. have access to those building codes. Um, what else? To in your office. The one that jumped, which I don't know where we ended up with, is travel. I think some of us are still rather enthusiastic about it. Um, right. Um, is that going to revert this year? Revert back down, or you mean that I? Uh, well, it's whatever we. It's been five hundred. It's been five hundred for the past two. So did we not get it in the? Tw we didn't get the increase. We didn't get an increase. We're still at five hundred. We wanted twenty five hundred, so oh, we, we could actually go it. to the national. Right. No, we just no. It, it, it was at five hundred. It got it got uh, funded at five hundred. Oh, okay. I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. But we wanted it to go to twenty five hundred, so you could go to a national for the override. But it didn't. Right. Right. Yeah, that didn't. They happen. did. They took it out. Right. Well, um, I think given what we're asking for this year, I'm I, I, sorry, so, Brian. I think we I need would, to wait another year. Yeah, I do. Uh, but I want to make sure your licensing true, is for both how employees. How much, uh, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, if we here. have two employees, right, so dues, so dues and memberships for APA, those would probably have. It wouldn't be doubled, but it would probably. It's six hundred. So it's, it's by a sliding scale salary. based on salary. Right. And then if you have your ACAP, it's a, more ICP certification. It's more. And then you have to like that's a very expensive right. No, we'll we'll f figure that out, and that so that will have to get week. that will have to get up. My 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 um, the one thing that has consistently we have not been doing, and you can see it went from three thousand to twenty five hundred. We are only really using you can see on the snapshot of um, it's probably around a thousand or so. Mm. Um, year and for for the whole year, so it's possible we can just shift. So the budget total budget doesn't change, but but maybe some of it comes out of the advertising and goes into mm -hmm, mm -hmm. tuition or dues and memberships. Yeah. So um, Savannah, Nicole, and I can look and see what <laughs> actual numbers we need I for would. that. Do that so you can have professional development for two people. Yeah, no, that's the point. Yes, I, exactly. I strongly urge you to put as much into tuition as you can. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I would claim that even if we have to throw in an extra K on top, because I'm really disturbed that it's been zero for so many years. Wait, which one are you the talking about? The tuition. Tuition. Oh, yeah. But when you've gone to Zipa, how do you pay for that? Dues and memberships and travel. I don't like the titles of these because we I don't, know. and maybe that's a conversation when we go meet with FinCom, we should have the conversation of these, as it says, <coughs> tuition, it's not, we're not, it's like we're, it's not, it's continuing yeah. education. It's continuing education. And, you know, for well, communication, these. The thing is, I all, so all, we're no longer going to be submitting these Excel sheets. It's actually going to be all through Munis right now that okay. we're going to be, so they might have different categories anyway. Okay. We, we had a very small training on it, but we haven't, no one's actually gone into Munis to actually do the budgeting. So. Some of these, um, some of the, um, the titles. Yeah, the titles may change, but it would be excellent because I think it's also deceptive. Like it looks like you're like traveling, going to Bahamas, and sitting in the sun, right? It's actually like you can't do that for five hundred. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, so almost all of my travel, my travel budget, really, it's it's going to Boston for you know a monthly meeting, or for some reason, if I have to pay for parking when I'm going to SNEPA or some other conference. That's but 
I mean, it's I, transportation. Yeah, and, it's, uh, it's it's either using the train or for parking. So, what what I would one way of looking at this is how many professional meetings, how much seat continue education would you be able to do in a year? Price that out and put that into tuition. Yeah, is, Go ahead. AICP certification, there's a specific amount of CM credit you need. So right. we could like use that to right. hit it as a base. So keep your class. Uh, you may, maybe you don't yeah. yeah. Maybe you don't remember this, but I do not have a AICP certification. We'll get there. So, we, that's the other thing is we wanted you to get there. Yeah, we just haven't been putting it in the budget. So let's put it in the budget. <laughs> well, I would, I would just observe then that that is something to So get it in the budget and bring it back to us next week so we can yeah. look at it. I think it's. I'd say yes. Okay, so you know, we'll you figure. go to one conference a year, then you'll get your credits and. Yeah, yeah. So I have a question because years ago I remember looking at total budgets for planning departments, and I know that's uh, a different way of looking at it. And you sure. there, it's that's always okay. apples to oranges, but is are we if when we add it all up, does it look crazy or not? And that's not to be answered. It, but no, it does. It do, If you look at other. So if you look well, at other, things bigger, um, much bigger. A lot much bigger. bigger. They have, well, they have like, yeah, they, they have like nine or ten full time people. I mean, well, it's like Brookline. Oh, Brookline. I think it's Lexington. Sixty thousand population, and they're like literally a different. Oh, eleven world. people in the planning yeah. office is huge. Um, so, but what's comparable? Belmont, I think, is the closest. We are lower, level. and even at the end of this budget, we will be lower than most any other comparable community. So, I mean, that so at least we, we have going for us. Crazy. We have that, you know, going for us. Even but. Um, for a very sympathetic manager, I think at some point we do want to look at the total request because um, that's what they will do because it's the department budget. Request. Honestly, most people are going to be looking at the total request and right. number of Thank added full time employees. Right. So mm -hmm. there we are. And can you have comparisons for? Here We've done towns. Um, not at my fingertips but for like this I, budget year, but but I mean that when I think that would help. I do too. That's not for. I mean, we have no, that's, for that's for town meeting. That's for town meeting. It's not really. Yeah, yeah. Not yet. No, no, no. Or Finance committee. Yeah, Lisa too. Lisa. Yeah, I mean, I think she's aware. But, no, yeah. but I think I'm such It's a different animal. It, it wouldn't help to remind her, even if she right. is aware. No, without. I mean. Yeah. It's but easy enough to get. First thing is to get this, but I, I am thinking as we're talking, and you're, you guys are adding extras that I sympathize with, but just we, it'll be a total number yes, that's yeah, going to be mm -hmm. examined. All right, so what is the fiscal year 19 budget total? What is the actual? Do we know what that is? The actual? Yes, because uh, we've ended, but it's not on here. 144, 144. No, that's, that's the budget. That was what we asked for. I believe it. Actually, I think all of this was funded. I can't tell you for sure. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's okay. I, we just we should also have that the actual right. You're true right. actual You're right. You're right. what we've requested what because we we constantly are coming in under that comes in so that that all comes in through Munis so I'll be, we'll be able to when we're when I'm actually putting it in we'll, we'll see exactly how much we asked for and how much we got for each year each fiscal yeah. year so that will and you know it's not going to completely blow up this year it's going to go up maybe a little well I mean it's probably going to go up. At the least, you know, fifty. Okay. 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 Time but, time. So yeah, so Savannah, Nicole, and I are gonna work on Thursday on this budget, okay. um, and you'll, it'll be in your packets on Friday. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, for you to react to for Tuesday. Again, please, please, please take time to look at the River Street Architecture and Design. Um, we had meetings. We have a, gonna have hopefully a a very robust conversation about that. But we'll get a packet that will remind me on Friday to do that. I it will it'll be on the agenda. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, let's move on to the meeting minutes real quick um, from Tuesday, August twenty seventh, at seven thirty. Um, oh yeah, I wasn't there. I had a, I only had a couple of edits. Mine are substantive, so I'm just going to pass these on to Brian. Um, I, I don't think you guys want to hear all this. <laughs> so I'll yeah. just. I thought they were well done. Dennis Carlona's two ends, not one, you know, Schleicher. Peggy Schleicher is un oh, unknown as Peggy yes. Schleicher. I, that's what I thought. And I think um, it's Jay Gill, not James Gill. And, oh, where are you? Um, and the, there was a discussion about DPW. Page, page, page. Yes, I know. I'm looking very hard for it, and I'm not seeing it. Because unfortunately, I didn't use red ink. Um, shoot.
Here, I have a lot of emails. Oh, here it is. On the very first page, on the um, fifth bullet, uh, Ms. Von Mering reached out to James Gill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't know if that's his actual name, but I think, I, I think, Jay. It, they, Jay. I think it actually makes sense, but, but everybody yeah. knows him as Jay. So yeah. It's like, yeah. And the only other concern I have is that this is August 27th, and it's we're missing four months worth of getting in it, so we're really behind. And I don't know how we would deal with that, but that's a real concern. It, uh, I, it's an issue that I, I it's a, it's an HR issue that we need to deal with. Right. Right. I need I'm to just, deal with I'm just that. raising my concern. <laughs> 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 I, don't wanna, I don't really want to deal with it. But. <laughs> we, <don't. laughs> we don't blame it, but we. But, but you <laughs> must, you must. We actually so. had the money, too. That's what's annoying. Yeah. Um, I mean, we actually can However, that one. you know, I, I don't want to violate labor rules, but I do want to see the. We just got to figure out. We got to figure out. And maybe it teaches us we need um, two in rotation and we need backup, like a full yeah, I mean that's not typical, but but we, I mean we can't have this. Well, if we didn't put the two with the historical commission, we might have been able to call in another one. So lessons learned. Yeah, we thought we were. Yeah. Um, how does this vote work? I sustain my. I abstain from the after the meeting closed with the meeting minutes continued for your meeting here, between right? you oh, and. I wasn't there. Yeah, two people. So were there's meeting there. notes for a non. Forum planning board meeting on this. <laughs> oh yes, I observed that. Yes. Um, um, well, starting think, on page four. Then just yeah. the two of us have to vote. I don't think it's so. Got to be maybe a the motion, if someone would like to entertain it, uh, goes morning, for yeah, the actual yeah. up to the adjournment, and then from there, there's a second for yeah. the okay. second. So I'm going to move to uh, approve the minutes as amended, um, excluding the last. Um, portion of the agenda um, regarding the River Street project. Say that again, so approve the meeting minutes. Do we need to discuss, are we good? No. As okay. amended. Mm -hmm. uh, excluding the last. Ex the excluding the River Street After discussion. adjournment. Um, okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, and then I'll make another motion. Opposed, oh. absent, Betsy and did you want to yeah. abstaining? Yeah. Okay. So three O and uh, Betsy, you're gonna abstain because yes. you were present. Okay. Sure. Um, and then uh, for the last portion, the last I'm portion. going to make a motion that Mr. Julius and I approve the minutes for the final um, for, for the final portion of the minutes relating to the River Street project. And so, and for the first one, Craiger was absent, and Von yeah. Maring. Yeah. Well, Heather and um, and Hannon were absent. Craiger and Hannon were absent. Mm -hmm. They were absent. Not, I thought. Yeah, she. she Craiger and Hannon were absent. Okay. So it was three. It was three o two. Craiger and Hannon. Hannon absent. Got it. And uh, second. I second the motion. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Two. Two. Uh, those oh, and abstaining. Aye. Oh, yeah, right. Heather, mm -hmm. are you abstaining? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's yeah, you abstaining? Yes. So yes. it's two, oh, and three. Which I think is fine because it's for after. Yeah. For yeah. after. Yeah. The majority of those who were there. Voted. The yeah. majority of those who voted. Yeah, you're right. So. All right. Uh, are we all set? Are we good to close it down? Make a motion to. Adjourned. Do we have a second? Yes. Second. All uh, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Bring them. We'll see you next week. Thanks next so Tuesdays or next meeting. Yeah.